uh, if you guys can go ahead and introduce yourselves. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? It is Pharrell and Ape here. A lot of you guys will probably recognize me because I've done a few things with Midnight before. Does my backgrounds for my Faye videos. We've done a few discussions before. Appeared in a couple Blazing Night videos. But yeah, good to be here. And I'm Exodix Marix. Um, probably don't know me. I've, I've helped Blazing Night on his stream sometimes, but that's really about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all three of us are here today to talk about uh, Persona 5 Royal. And, you know, our opinions on it, what we think of the game, you know, its improvements from the original. And just discussing everything from, you know, gameplay, uh, you know, some quality of life changes, as well as the story. Mm -hmm. And a uh, quick warning ahead, this video obviously is going to be have a lot of spoilers, so if you haven't played the game... Or just don't care. Uh, you know, be warned. Yeah. Alright, just to get some, you know, a general feel. How do you guys feel about Royal? Honestly, I think it was a... I think I've played the original. I've seen it, I've seen it played many times. It was, it was how... In Persona series, and I really enjoyed it. It was a very definitive experience. It did some aspects, which we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on later, but... All in all, it was a very great experience for me. I've done one complete playthrough, and then I'm also doing a... I'm also in the middle of a practice run right now that I've taken notes on. Hopefully, maybe turn that into a video series at some point. Who knows? But yeah, I'm really enjoying the game. It was a great ex experience once again. But yeah, it was really good for me. I, I played the original Persona 5 as well. Um, it was my first Persona game. My friend sort of like told me about the Persona series but I kind of picked five up on a whim and I absolutely loved it and the as for my feelings on Royal I massively prefer over the original it took some of the more like tedious aspects of the original and just removed them and added features that were a lot better um, and also the new stuff that they added like um, the third semester is just really good and the new characters like the um, counselor and Kasumi are great characters as well. Yeah, same with you. I also started with Persona Five. You know, it's my intro to the Persona and SMT series, and it was it was a great game. And this game definitely uh, exceeded my expectations because I've usually enhanced versions of games usually are kind of like a cash grab. You know, don't change too much, don't really add too much. But this one really added a lot of stuff that really needed to be in the vanilla version. And I'm extremely glad uh, and happy at some of the changes they did. It's really amazing. It's like they added something that I, I didn't know I needed, but I'm glad they did. Yep. Yeah. Sure, sure, indeed. And as you mentioned, uh, this game does include two well technically three new characters that being maruki mm -hmm. who is the who's of the counselor confidant and uh kasumi who is of the faith arcana and of course uh jose well they call him jose but i think that's stupid so i just call yeah, him, i'm just exactly. i'm just i'm just gonna call him jose yeah exactly yeah. that's what i call him too yeah and i actually like all three of these characters even though we don't get to interact with Jose too much, just from the little we do get to interact with him, he's awesome. I wish we had more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, Jose is, yeah, he's, he's just like an enigma of a character, if anything else, because he hints as to like kind of what he's doing, and I mean the big clue that we have to go on is his character design. I mean, he's got the, the yellow eyes like the previous, like Caroline, Justine, Lavenza, and the other Velvet Room attendants to do. So my theory is he's got something to do with that, which is kind of how he, with, with how he interacts with the Mentos and says it's like a living thing. I mean, it's kind of obvious that he has some tie to the Velvet Room, but it's maybe just not the most apparent thing. But yeah, Jose was a very fun character to interact with. I really liked his like his opening exchange and. How he like how he like just, he he doesn't really have a name for Joker, just calls him Mister. But one of my favorite comments was when was after he leaves the first time, he's like he's a really and on says he's like, he's a really nice kid. 
Besides, he called me pretty lady. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Morgana got all jealous. Oh, yeah. God. Also, Jokes is so really good. useful because he can he gives you like yeah. more experience and all that stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll explain what he does a little bit um, later, but one thing people mentioned when they first you know saw Jose from all the teaser trailers and all that is that he kind of had like a Pinocchio aspect, especially with the nose. And I guess with the I, theme of the uh, game. Yeah, that's, I did notice that. Because Pinocchio that. is associated with Wishes, which is a big part of this game. Yeah, exactly. And that's we'll, way to look at we'll it. delve into Maruki and Kasumi a little bit later, but I just want to go over some gameplay stuff that they did change. Because the gameplay, in my honest opinion, really didn't need too many changes. But there was one big one that I really, really enjoyed, in which was that you don't need to get a certain level with your party members for their confidants to perform a baton pass. You get it yes. automatically, which was yes. very helpful at Akumra's Palace because you can use harder right away. Don't have to worry about the baton pass. You know, it's like exactly. you, you just do it right away and kind of building into that. There's a new thing in a location called Kichijoji, I believe that's the name, in which you yep, can play. Yep, Kichijoji. Yeah, in which you could actually play darts there, which help boost the baton pass rank that they have, which is brand new, and it only goes up to rank three. And the benefits you get is a little bit of health and SP back. And yeah, they, the basically, yeah. As well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean. The, the best way to think about it is they took they took a broken mechanic and just made it even more broken. The thing is, in the original Persona 5, I never actually used baton passes all that much, but in Royal, I used them all the fucking time. Oh my god, yeah. Like, there's so much heavy emphasis on, like, use it here, use it here. Like, it gives you reasons to rely on the baton pass. Especially like taking time and just building up the baton pass rank. That's a, that's another big thing to do. Which I mean, I didn't really focus on until like way later in the game. But but still, it puts a lot of emphasis on like, yeah, the baton pass is something you definitely want to rely on. Yeah. And other things that have been changed is palaces. Some have been slightly, oh yeah. Some have been slightly altered to you know go with uh, a new piece of equipment that Joker has, which is the grappling hook. Although fans actually first got to see the grappling hook in Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah we got a little bit of a tease with that. And honestly, I really, really like how some of the palaces were reworked just to kind of fit in this new aspect. And while the other and well, the other big aspects, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, being the will seeds, because the, obviously the palaces had to get a bit of a rework to fit those in as well. But just fitting in like th this, these little life changes with just to fit in areas where you can like just be a badass and use the grappling hook. It's so nice. It was really nice to see some of these palaces reworked. And honestly, yeah. I feel like a lot, I feel like almost all of them, if like most, if not all of them, were reworked for the better. Definitely. Yeah. And the grappling hook isn't. You know, only restricted to you know moving around the palace. You can actually use it to ambush enemies, and when you do, well, you can ambush them for a far. And when you do, you inflict a certain kind of, you know, ailment on them. Usually, like sleep or yeah, confusion. I think, yeah, yeah, I believe it's like fear, dizzy, or confused. One of the two. But ambushing with the grappling hook is so much fun. Yeah, and it yeah, fits in. Yeah, isn't it? You have to get someone's confidant for that. Yeah, uh, it is faith rank four you need. Yeah, mm. for Kasumi. I thought it was. Yeah. And it, it's just a great addition. I'm glad that they didn't just use it for getting around. And they did find a way to, mm -hmm. you know, have it even benefit you more during combat. Oh, absolutely. And it does fit into, you know, being a thief. You do gotta use scrap hooks. And it looks badass. Right. Mm. If I had one complaint about it, though, is that all a lot of Memento's dialogue that's new is all about that grappling hook. Oh yeah, there's so many like Memento's conversations that revolve around that grappling hook and how like so like how much of a badass Joker is using it and, just, and people like even incorporating is like, hey, what? I think one of them was just like, hey, what if we added like an like added like an electric charge to the grappling hook line? And I think Morgana follows up with, 
Probably wouldn't be useful for getting around, but it would make a dang good use in combat. I'm just like, now I want to see it. You're teasing me here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great little addition. And you mentioned earlier, but there is a new thing in palaces called Will Seeds. There are three to collect. And once you do collect all three, you are able to, you know, get an accessory item from it. And if you go into mementos with it complete, uh, Jose will fix it for you to make it even better. And what I love about the will seeds is that, uh, first of all, there's three of them. And the last one is protected by a really powerful enemy. So you got to beat that before you can get it. And it encourages, you know, even more exploration within palaces. Make sure you want to check every nook and cranny to make sure you've gotten everything. And, yeah, we, and, yeah. The, and a, a small benefit is that they also restore your SP by a, by a little. Yeah, which is a very, very essential thing, especially when you're exploring palaces. Like, I was at, like, yeah. just from those alone, like, I remember in the original, I really wanted to push myself and to see how quickly I could do each of the palaces. I was able to day one Kamoshidas in the original, which is pretty difficult to do. But in Royal, it was all the more easier thanks to the Will Seeds because of their SP restoration. Yeah. I managed to, even in like Royal and the original one, I managed to day one like all the palaces because that's just how I am. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm the same way. I want to clear it as much, I want to have as much free time as possible. Yeah. Yeah, so that really helps because SP in the early game is really valuable. You really need to keep it your eye on it. It is very valuable. And. Speaking of, you know, the palace, uh, some bosses got some new additions, new phases or altered phases. Like with Kamoshida, yeah. uh, instead of like the little goons he sent out in the vanilla game, now he has uh, Mishima and Shiho, which further yeah. solidifies his scumbagness. Oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, I still remember we got to that, we got to the boss fight in the Let's Play that I'm co-commentating on, and like... Of like I, it was myself and one other guy that was in there like we knew what the boss fight was going to be like and then everyone else didn't we got to that specific phase like and then Mishima does the thing he block it and then he sends out Mishima and then here comes Shiho in a bunny costume everyone just lost it because it was it was just like can we just kill him now like yeah. I don't care about saving him can we just kill him please it was like I was right in that boat too I mean it it just really drives home that point is like he is a scumbag and there is no redeeming him unless we go through with this yeah if that if there's one thing i like about royal it's that i got to experience the whole opening act all over again because when i first oh, played opened... when i first played persona 5 getting to know kamoshida and the stuff he did it real like the game could have ended at kamoshida and i would have felt satisfied Oh my god, yeah. that it, oh, It's one of the best... I believe I watched the top... Like, somebody was ranking the palaces of Persona 5, and they said Kamoshida's Palace was one of the best opening acts in any video game, and I'm right... I am I'm fully agree with that. It's such a strong way to open up. It's like, yeah, this is happening, and no one's doing anything about it, and it's so severe is the thing, too. It just really drives home that point. It's like, yeah, we need to deal with this. We have the power to deal with this. Why would we not? Yeah. And we have, and then there was the whole thing about him trying to manipulate, um, or kind of manipulate, uh, consume you into like, not talking to you. Yeah. Uh, when you go to the guidance office. And then even, um, I hated um, uh, Kawakami for a bit when she said, did you make a move on consume me like, as if joke is like the same person as Kamoshida like no bitch yeah no, exactly like I just met her <laughs> pretty much I mean, you help her out on the train once. Once. Yeah. Like, yeah we help her on the train once and then the next thing you know Kamoshida's talking shit like bruh uh, do not yeah uh, but of course, Kamoshida isn't the only one with a new phase, as uh, Madarame also gets a new one, in which... He... Yes! Which Madarame I... Madarame is best boss. Well, no, yeah. second best, because of um, what happens in the third semester, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, we will get and, to like, that if later. If we're talking, like, I guess, base game, like, if we're talking, like, of the original uh, bosses, Madarame is the best. Like, I really, place. really enjoyed that that little change to Madarame's boss. Because, I mean, 
In the original, it was just take out the appendages of the painting for two phases, and then every time you take them down. But yeah, it was boring. There really wasn't anything to it. I mean, sure, there was also the... I'm, I'm not sure if this was in the original or not, but whenever Madarame did... Well, something that I didn't know about until we did it in the Let's Play, because we were able to pull it off, was we were is when Madarame, that first phase of the painting appendages, does that attack where he makes you weak to all affinities, Morgana actually suggests that maybe try covering him in paint instead. So then it becomes a special order where you can send someone to kind of get ready. And then when he does that attack, you can actually cover him in paint and then he's weak to all affinities. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't vanilla game. Oh, it was. Okay. So I just actually never knew about it because I was never I never But yeah, when he, we finally get to this new second phase, and it again one of the things that I think Royal really capitalized on is just making these boss fights revolve around just what this, what the boss is all about. For like, for Kamoshida, it was like the abuse and just the manipulation of the volleyball team, making them think that they were less than nothing. For Matarames, it was just the back-to-back cr -back creation of these fakes, of fake Sayuri, so he just made fakes of himself that were, that were different in their own right, but they were also just of him. They were imperfect that, because he yeah. has no weaknesses himself, but those copies do have a weakness. Exactly. And that fight, that fight is what really drives home that, yeah, you want to abuse Baton Pass because, my God, I think probably, I, so my first run of the game, like, I was just kind of going at it casually. My practice run was where I finally thought about it, like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So it got to the point where I was like, okay, so he reflects that, he's weak to that, weak to that. It got to the point where I did a full circle baton pass, ended on Joker, and then I also had Matador at the time, who had Mopsy. Mm -hmm. None of the fakes resist psychokinesis. So a fully charged Mopsy did like, it just wiped them all out. It was so satisfying. The thing is, it's kind of like easy to tell which, like what element to use on each. Exactly, because because but yeah, wind, but like for the wind, it's lightning. Lightning is wind. Fire is ice, and ice is fire. Yeah, but it's like it's that point. It's like oh, if I hit their weaknesses enough times, I can do a full circle baton pass and then hit them yeah. with a really big all rounder attack. Imagine a full circle baton pass. A full circle baton pass in myriad troops. Oh, <laughs> good lord! lord. Oh, we'll talk about myriad truths and a little later. Concentrated full circle baton pass, myriad truths. Oh, we'll talk. Oh, we'll god. talk about that later. We'll talk about oh, that. Oh god! Uh, but yeah. But oh, and the next one is Kanoshiro, and what his new phase is? He actually has bodyguards, which take yeah, their heads for him. With money. Yeah, so another thing that Royal really capitalizes on more than the original is the use of status ailments, like forget, confuse, dizzy. Mm. So the thing is, when you get to that second phase for Kanashiro, he's actually not, he actually doesn't resist or block any of these status ailments. So you really got to use that to your advantage. And it's also striking at the weakness, because I remember when I did that fight a few days ago again, I grinded up, I, well, I remained in the palace a bit longer than normal because I wanted to get on specifically to level 25 so she would learn Fire Break. When I had Fire Break, all I had to do was just focus on the big guy with the medium fire damage and then inflict a status ailment on everyone else when I could. And that, that was pretty much how it went. And again, with the technical damage being also emphasized on greatly, it's just, yeah, it, it, these boss fights, sure, they capitalize on this villain's sins, but they also do a really good job of teaching you about the mechanics that you may have glossed over in the original and put a lot more emphasis on them. You are right yeah, because it, they really want you to use Anne in this fight because she has a spell that puts everyone to sleep. Yeah, if you have if you have her high enough levels, she has the lullaby that puts everyone to sleep, and she also has fire break at that time, so she can nullify fire resistance. Yeah, because if you don't like put. Yeah, because those guys are those guys are ridiculously they're ridiculously tough. strong for that point in the game, and it, and I think they resist a lot of elements. Yeah, they, I think they resist like pretty much everything. And then Kanashiro himself loves to do lullaby, which has a chance of putting your entire party to sleep. And then he also follows up with snap, which also does technical damage to people to your foes that are asleep. So 
Yeah, he can be quite annoying. Technical damage is extremely important in this fight. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a ridiculous emphasis. And the next palace boss, which I feel like did a little change, was Futaba's Yeah. Mom. I, I, I Yeah, cognitive Wakaba. I, yeah. I barely noticed any change. And one thing I, I yeah. heard about is that the choices you get asked if you actually kind of downplay Utaba, she actually doesn't help you too much, but you yeah. really got to encourage her. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more or less the big change with that fight was just Wakaba going on and on about like how she's worthless or anything like that. But just like the positive, the just like denying her and then positively reinforcing Futaba, yeah, that's the big change to that fight. There wasn't yeah. everything else was just pretty bog standard. I did enjoy that you could use a grappling hook too. You just completely skip that last part at, when you do the infiltration. Oh to the boss. my god! And like that that entire sequence is just yeah. It's just like hey Joker, what do you want to do? How do you want to like go about this as a grappling hook, Joker? Spider Man. Yeah, you can do it just like in vanilla, or you could just skip it, which I just which I yeah. Do. I've actually I'm like done, I, I need my I, SP. I, yeah, yeah, right. I actually, yeah, when I did that palace yesterday in my practice run, one of the things I did was I, because there's a chest that you can go and nab, I went and nabbed it, and it's actually an SP restoring item, so like, okay, I could finish it normally, or I could backtrack all the way back stealthily and still do the grappling hook segment. Yeah, that was dumb, but I really wanted to know what was in that chest. And, hmm, the next one. I, I gotta say, Okuma's house really got a nice upgrade. It's not as bad as it was in the original. Yeah, specifically however, the first segment. Yes, and however, I can't say too much about the boss. Uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna link a video in which someone else already made a why the Okuma boss fight is annoying. Because otherwise we'll be here for a while. Oh, yeah. But to make things short is you really got to use baton pass. It's really important. Yeah, and you, you, and really you have gotta... and you yeah. have to have prior knowledge for a bit. Mm hmm. Because yeah. one thing he does do that Krumar does do that's, you know, annoying is that uh, when he sends out his goons, his robot, you know, workers, you have to kill them all within like, I think, two to three churns. And if you don't, yeah, they run away. And, and you have it, to start all over again. You have to start all yeah. over, which isn't too bad for like the first two waves, but it's that third wave with like the tall green one. Yeah, it's the big green boys that it really starts to just get annoying because their only weakness is psychokinesis. And unless you've done some prior research and gotten Joker a really good persona that has psychokinesis hit, like a big, like a medium psychokinesis to all, and then you're also using hard. That fight, that phase just becomes so painful. For me, uh, I had to do it twice because I saw I fucked up. I literally, before I started again, I literally went into the velvet room, got Izanagi to open your pick row, and then went back in, and I was literally hurry with the um, all psychic attack, but I'm past the Joker, and then uh, Myriad Truce, and so I'm like, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> I'm not dealing with the shit, I'm done. And, yeah. <laughs> and another thing is, uh, this actually made me realize something that I never had a problem with. At one point, because it kept restarting, restarting, my SP was pretty much gone. And I'm like, okay, mm. I want to get out of here mm. and restart. Then I realized there's no way to leave that fight or intentionally quit. Either you yeah. die or wait for the timer to go. Then I'm like, oh. so, I had to, so I had to suspend the game and then go right back into the save. Mm. Yeah, but again, I did. yeah, but there is a video that goes further into it, and it's annoying. Uh, the Big Bang stuff, like, it was just that yeah. section of the game. Oh, Otherwise, the, the, fighting the, Haru and the executive wasn't too hard. Yeah, exactly. It's just, exactly. It's just like the, the green guys that are the worst. It's just that phase of green robots is just the absolute worst. And it doesn't help that he buffs one of them, which is usually the one that screws you over, because he gives them a defensive yeah. buff. Yeah, exactly. So what I so what I ultimately have to rely on is I have to rely on on for that fight, and then I just have to have her, I just have to use um, fire break, and then whenever he buffs one, I'll just use Dakaja, and then follow up and hopefully kill him with that. 
Yeah, and then, of course, you do that, and it's like, oh, you wasted that turn. That chart could have decided everything. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> well, right. let's just... The next one is, yeah. uh, I believe, Say's Palace, right? Yes, yeah. the casino. Uh, and this one got pretty bad. good. They didn't nah, that wasn't good. Too much to it was pretty good. I think they made like the darkness part of the game where you like kept like yeah that, around the dark. That I think dark me. I think that got shorter. It felt shorter. Yeah, A little it, bit, it yeah. Shorter. But the new addition to again, there was nothing really added to this. But it felt pretty much the exact same. Yeah, I think it was apart from they just shortened the tongue of darkness. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it was it was a good one. Yeah, I think the new thing they added was the uh, elemental roulette wheel thing in the second phase. Yeah, yes. during our boss fight. Yeah, that's the only new thing they added, which kind of fucked me over because I brought Haru with me and she got nuclear and just focused Haru with nuclear attacks. I'm like, Sai, stop it, please. I guess I got somewhat. I guess I got somewhat lucky because, like the, for the few turns she was alive, she got like almighty. And while that oh, hurt, yeah, that happened. That happened for me too. <laughs> while it hurt, again because it didn't hit any weaknesses, I didn't have to worry. Mm -hmm. And if you have, and one thing I wish they fixed was a lot of her attacks are physical. So if you have a persona like with like a reflect or cheeky OG that nullifies it. It's not going to do anything to Joker. No. You can pretty much, if you can, solo it with Joker. Give Joker, he's an argument to open it. Yeah, like, exactly. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know, but all in all, I felt like say, like size boss fight actually was a bit more kind of in line with like kind of how she how she turned out. Like she was so focused on winning, she's like gambling and everything. And just like the changing of weakness, it really solidifies it. It's like, yeah, she is willing to put everything on the line just to take you down. Yeah. And Shido's Palace, which is the next one, uh, it seems like those rat sections were cut down a bit, because I could have sworn they yeah, the rat sections were cut down, and there's also the addition of the mouse traps that you can use, which restore your HP and SP. Point. That that introduction to the cheese was probably one of the best parts of the game. Oh my With god! With everyone it, trying to because, get into the cage. Yeah, exactly. Because because Shido's palace is just so long. You really have to play it by ear and conserve what resources you have if you want to clear it in one day. And it also doesn't help that you've got back to back boss fights, and then you have to fight you know who just before you secure your route to the treasure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it, I, yeah. I just feel like it was a lot easier to day one. Uh, we'll come back to Shido's Palace for Goro. But, you know, going a little bit yeah. further on, we actually do have Shido's boss fight, which got one new phase at the very end of the fight, which I think yes, was and amazing. I'm so glad they did this. It was so good. Yeah. That was about... So, what they did was... Shido does an attack that blows all your other party members away, and then it turns into a one-on-one -on -one between Joker and Shido. And it is so powerful. Mm. It reminded like, me of Persona really 4. It, it reminded me of Persona 5, the animation, which they kind of did that. It was pretty much 1v1. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it was more or less a 1v1 just between Joker and Shido and it, it like you could just feel like the raw emotion that went into every one of their attacks. It was just like like yeah, this is it. It's it's me or you. Yeah, so the, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. That was otherwise it remained unchanged besides that final part, but at that point he's almost already dead, so you can easily do it if you play your cards right. Exactly. You just gotta, and especially if you have if you have the strength confidant maxed out at that point, you can just get a couple, get a cup, and then depending on what confidants you finished, you can get some ultimate fusions ready, do a couple of concentrates, and then just boom, yeah, do massive amounts of damage. Now, Although one thing I do recommend for that fight is bring someone with the Kaja because Shido loves to spam Heat Riser. I forgot. Oh, I, I remember during that fight, I had Joker with Hedicon Kairos. Who was just not filled with nothing but buffs and debuffs. So Ooh, pretty much everyone yeah. else, everyone, but like almost like seventy-five percent of the fight, Joker was actually not the one attacking, but giving the buffs. 
like yeah, attack he's up. Yeah, the buffs and the debuffs. And it's like, Shido's like, oh yeah, Heat Riser. And I'm like, ha ha, nope. And then gone. <laughs> yep. And there goes your turn. Mm-hmm. Now, the other one that really didn't get too much change was the quote-unquote final palace. Yeah. So I felt... I don't, I don't think there's anything different, really, aside from like. Yeah, the mementos. Yeah, the depths of mementos really didn't get any like notable changes. Well, there is one thing that I I don't remember if it was in the original or not because I never bothered to double check it. Was if you go back to the entrance after you found a safe room, Caroline will actually heal your party a little bit. Yes, that was in vanilla. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I just never bothered to double check it. But yeah, you could always go back and heal. But like, other than that, the dungeon itself is very, it's still very much the same. And then there's that grappling hook. There's that epic grappling hook swing right before you fight the Holy Grail. But other than that, dungeon that dungeon really didn't change much at all. No, I don't think so. It's still very straightforward. I do about changed either. No, didn't he really didn't. Either. But he really didn't need any big changes. He was already tough as is. Mm. But yeah, Yaldabaoth didn't change. And that would actually be it for vanilla Persona 5. Because after yep. you yelled about, you get your ending. And you actually could still reach this ending if you don't meet certain requirements. Which I'm glad I let, I looked it up. Ooh. Now that's one thing you do. If, if you haven't played Persona 5 before the vanilla, and you just play it straight through, there is a good chance that you will miss all the new royal stuff. Yeah. Yes. But of course, I'm pretty sure every person who played vanilla Persona 5 looked up how to get to the new stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But before we get into, you know, what happens after you yelled about, I uh, just want to touch up a little bit on Mementos, because Mementos did get changed. Like, it has new music, I think, like, three new tracks, depending on yeah, the levels you Yeah, three new to, tracks, I believe. Which, thank God, because that music was annoying. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's actually where you meet jose and what he asks is for flowers that you get you know alongside while driving through you get the items and then you also get flowers for him to for you to collect and then you trade it in for certain items which is very mm -hmm. helpful because there's some items like like that can switch or sp hp even you know give yourself your whole team buffs so those at items one are really yeah good. and at one point yeah depending on how far you get jose uh, for like a good amount of flowers you can actually get Soma from him, which is the yeah. best healing item in the game. Yes. This is the full restore for both HP and SP. So. Yep. Which I only use like twice in the game. Yeah, same here. <laughs> but there's also a new thing that you, that is in Mementos, and there are stamps that you get from either ah, yes. from, e from from either you get them from either getting off into a new area, or you get them. At just random places inside one of the levels and by collecting these stamps yeah. jose will change mementos in which you can get more experience items or money i, I immediately went yeah. for experience i maxed that out first yeah oh, yeah i didn't actually go for experience right away for mine early on i was more focused on money and items oh yeah because is... in p5 royal it's a lot I find it's a lot harder to get money because, like, in the in the original one, it's like I had I think, max money like after my second after my second like playthrough on like New Game Plus. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, one of the like the co the cognition, well, the momentous cognition changes that Jose can do with those stamps are just so helpful. It makes going there like actually worthwhile because you can get you can get yeah. some good stuff from the item drops and then depending on like how you do everything else you can level up quickly you can it just make it easier to grab money like to give you guys an idea on how useful the money up was for me i was at a point where i decided that it was time to start the fortune confidant with jahaya which as you guys know requires you to buy a holy stone for a hundred thousand yen so I had like 174,000 at the time. So I was just down to 74,000. I went into Mementos to do the to do a few requests, including the one that allows you to actually fully start her confidant. I went from 74,000 to over 400,000 in like 20 minutes. 
It was re- it was I was I was like this is this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. And the good thing is I think those stems actually carry on this when you get boss as well. I'm yeah. pretty sure they do too. And yeah, the and yeah. well one other thing the other thing was like I actually like took time and I completed like finding the stands for every area. And oh my god, it a it's T is B, it's nice to have like that fully maxed out every but the only other but the thing that I really find disappointing about it is like you don't other than fully maxing out the memento changes, you don't really get much for finding all of them. No. Well, at least he like, does a good job. Yeah, right. Which is more than enough for me. <laughs> true that, true of that. Of course there are new side quests you can do with mementos too. And one thing that I'm, I never experienced in base vanilla Persona 5, I don't know if it was in there, but during one of the, while I was riding around one of the areas, I actually fell through the floor into the next area. Yes, this is a new thing. This is a new thing. So one of the new things that got introduced in Mementos was also deviation. So an area can be extremely different from like what from like anything you've seen so like it'll be it'll be like really dark and you won't be able to look at the map but there'll be treasure demons everywhere another floor could be swarming with shadows like there's more enemies than usual uh one floor as midnight just said there are spots that you can fall through the floor and go to a different level but you can actually see these if you use third eye which i really wish i knew about earlier and the other one which is the really big one is that there is a chance that the reaper could already be there. I didn't like that the first time because I was looking for stamps and when I fell through, I'm like, no, 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 let me back up, let me back up. <laughs> I, get, I, want, I want to get the stamps. That never, that one's never happened to me. The only ones that have happened to me are the darkness ones and the increased number of shadows. Like, that was it. Uh, I sadly yeah. never experienced any of those again. It's like, oh, here's this cool thing, you know, it's kind of dark. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll see that more. Never saw it again. I saw that the. The, yeah, the it is. They the are dark very... when I literally just got out of Memento, went back in the next day, completely clear. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, there are actually new variations to enemies. I can't remember what these variations are, but upon defeat, they actually explode. I can't remember the name. Ah, the oh. disaster shadows. Disaster. There we go. Yeah. And those yes. are actually nice additions because if you do attack them, it doesn't matter if. Let's say you attack it with Joker, doesn't matter if Makoto has the next turn. That shadow will kind of butt in, and because you attack it, it attacks, I think, everyone in the party. Yeah, I think it attacks, and it can it actually attacks hurt. like, frantically. Mm. And but it really, hurts. you gotta put around it. Yeah, it, it, those things hurt. So it's good yeah, if you... The good thing is, like, you take them out and they explode and hurt the other shadows. Yeah, but you have to have yeah. knowledge of their weakness ahead of time. And if it's a yeah. new shadow that you haven't occurred you know, encountered before, they haven't exploited the weakness of already, you kind of just don't touch it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just don't touch it for now. So, yeah, there's that. And it's... Well, actually, one thing I completely forgot about was uh, the guns. They rebalance the guns. Oh! Oh my god, the oh, guns look, got probably one of the best they spots they in the game. Did. This is, this is one the change they needed. So made. God. Yeah, because in Vase Vanilla, you, of course, you had the weapons, but after you completely go through all the ammo, you can't use it at all until you leave and then come back in. This time around, you can use them as much as you want after each battle. However, I think the ammo's cut in half and the damage is boosted. Yeah, more, it's something like along those lines, but this was the change that the guns needed to be good because Morgana actually explains it in when you first get the guns in Kamoshida's Palace. He says something along the lines of, because when you have this, enemies expect you to come at it with them fully loaded. So, in their mind, the gun is still, is still like, packed to the brim, and it's got a full, full, um, it's got a full clip and everything. It's like, it actually makes sense. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure if you reloaded it in front of them, even if the clip's empty, you'd be like, oh shit, now it's reloaded. Yeah, exactly. But no, yeah, the guns got probably the biggest change, and it just made them so good. Because yeah, in base vanilla game, I never used the guns because I'm like, oh, yeah, I used, I, I the used... only time I'd ever use guns was a gun was like a gun skill on a persona, but that would be it. 
yeah, yeah. and if there's like a pixie uh, even then i would just be like shoot once shoot once i wouldn't like spray all over yeah exactly mm-hmm. but not the first thing to do when you get into a fight <laughs> it's just pull out the gun and just like and just Burr! spraying probe boy spraying probe <laughs> Yeah, so that, pretty much. I love that addition, and mm, might as well so dive a little bit into the Velvet Room because the Velvet Room did get some changes, like some personas were changed a bit, and the Compendium did get expanded from the third semester onwards, as well as you know some other different mm. personas. And there's a new feature called, you know, in which there's an alarm inside the Velvet Room. Every it usually happens like after defeating a certain number of enemies or defeating a really powerful enemy. And during these times, you know, some accidents might happen and your persona could get even stronger than it really, what you really wanted. Like, you could be, like, only expecting, like, two level ups. Next thing you know, you got, like, seven level yeah. ups on that persona. But, of course, there is a cost at the very end once you use it more than once. Because at the second time, depending on the equipment you use, an accident will happen. Which could happen regularly, but they're extremely rare. This one kind of yeah. guarantees it. But... With something like the guillotine execution, you basically throw yeah. down two weak personas. Yeah. Especially in week one, it could probably give you a really powerful one. I did that. I did a, uh, a like an alarm fusion like that was risky, and I got um, I can't remember what it was. It was the demon that was sitting on the toilet, and he got like zero like offensive skills. It was just all like um, passive skills that like buff. Um, like fire damage and wind damage and all that. <laughs> yeah. So as a cautionary tale of don't do that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Only do it once and then get out of there. <laughs> Another thing yeah. that also changes is personas now have traits. Which. Oh my god, the persona traits. The, these were something that it really fits him and it just makes like using them all the best. Because a persona can have a completely different trait depending on like what you fuse into it or what you recruit it with. But they can do anything along the lines of increase damage after a baton pass or decrease the SP cost of certain types of skills or have a chance of inflicting ailments after you down and pull they're, they're so good. It makes you really think about what kind of set you want for that persona because in the base game you can be just like, okay, put the strong skills all, just put everything good. But this one now you gotta think, it's like, well, I can do that. It's not, yeah, you know, exactly. it's not like benefiting. It's not benefiting the the trait. Mm. So it really makes you sit. Eh, <laughs> you'll be in the velvet room for a long time. Deciding. Yeah, exactly. Just thinking about yeah. what you want to do for each one. Yeah. So that's and also. With, I think it's your the phantom thieves. Like when their persona, when you max out their confidence, their persona gets a new trait as well. Oh, yes. yeah, that's right. They do get new traits. Mm, which is good it's really nice <laughs> yeah so i'm that's one thing i didn't need but i'm really glad they did it oh yeah it's a change that like you didn't really expect but now that you've had it it's like damn this is really nice mm. and just like, some off the, yeah off the, off the playing like uh royal it's really hard to go back to the original no there's no yeah, need to go back right? to it there's really no need to go back to it yeah i can't exactly. think of, i can't think of one thing that vanilla persona 5 has over this game yeah right mm. well yeah there's technically one thing which we might as well get into now is difficulty and royal oh what th- actually no before we get that there is one thing uh we did miss and that's showtime attacks Oh, the showtime oh, attacks. Woo-hoo! You talk about flashy, over-the-top, but just a good time. It is those showtime attacks. The best way to look at them is the fusion attacks that I believe were in Persona 4 Golden, but they're actually competent and they do really good damage. Oh, a stupid amount of damage. And they don't only work against normal enemies. They do work against bosses and super bosses. Yeah, mm. it's... It's really, really, and like, in like each character has like a different like set combinations. Like, um, I'd, I'd say probably one of my favorite ones is Ryuji's and Yusuke's. Just for, oh, yeah. for just, it's just for the 
like because the lines can vary every time you do one but my favorite one from yusuke is just behold a saucy zesty must be <laughs> I can never get enough of Yusuke saying that. It's just so funny. I think I my... Think... Oh, go ahead. I, was say... I think my favorite one is... Or one of my favorites is definitely Yusuke's arms. Oh, that one's that, really That good. is cool. That's, like, very cinematic. It makes Yusuke look cooler than he actually is. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, all of Yusuke's ones are really good. Like, Yusuke's um, Ryuji is really good. Yusuke's Khan is really good. Okay. I didn't realize until I was thinking about it. It is kind of somewhat biased, but both my favorites have Makoto in it. And that's with Ryuji's nah. and Haru's. Well, I like it. Well, oh my god, look. Obviously, it's <laughs> Ryuji's and Makoto's, obviously, Fist of the North Star. He even says Fists of the Phantom Thieves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what's really good. And my favorite part is the end in which he gives her a soda, she crushes it, and then he bows to her. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I think my favorite part from Makoto's and Haru's is the fact that Makoto's obviously super into it, but Haru's just kind of like not, sort of in a way. Like, she, yeah, she's just like, kind of there. When, she's kind of there. When Makoto jumps in, Makoto jumps in the ring. Haru just comes in for the side. She even says, "Pardon me." <laughs> Well, and then, she, well, and then of course, you got the follow-up where they do the two hits, and then Makoto brings out a f***ing chair and just bonk. Yeah, and... Uh, he also does a corkscrew and does the elbow drop. Yeah. Or it's just like a standard elbow drop. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> but because of the way they work on bosses, there actually uh, is another variation to all of them. That depends yeah, on so what you're attacking. Variations. Like at the very end of Makoto and Haro's, instead of that elbow drop, I think it's like just a drop kick. Where you don't see, yeah, the right. But again, those are really needed. Every one gets at least two, with the exception of Kasumi yeah. and Goro. They only get one with Joker. Yeah, yeah. I think it brings a lot of personality, and it actually reminds me of one thing Jose does give you, and that's a wishing star. Yeah. Yep. And it's because of those wishing stars that they even can perform and these they, showtimes. They can perform these attacks. Yeah, and it's a, I mean, hey, it's a welcome thing. I'll go into. Uh, I, I want to talk about that witching star later, especially with the final place. Because I feel oh, like that witching yeah, star does work. The witching star. But again, going back to what I wanted to mention earlier, I feel like this game's way easier compared to vanilla Persona 5, just because of how much stuff you get. Like, obviously. It is pretty good. It's pretty easy. Like, I know Showtime activates when I think Joker is low on health or when the enemy is low on health. Yeah, it can be either or, like, if you baton pass to a certain character or... I don't know, it's kind of up in the air, I guess, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, but I just felt this game felt a little bit easier. I've heard maddening is actually really easy. Mm. So I guess that's, like, one complaint I have to say. Like, all of this stuff is nice. But they kind of make the game easier. But yeah, yeah, right. Like going back to the grappling hook, you automatically inflict the ailment. It gives you a huge edge in battle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially if it's a high level shadow. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then just when you inflict the ailment on him, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, I think it would be would have been better if they didn't work on bosses, because I think I ended like yeah. one of them with a super attack or with a showtime. Oh yeah, right. But aside from you know combat, there is some quality of life changes that I like. Like first of all, you can run in the overworld and in mementos. Yeah, that's oh, really like, nice. It actually took me a while to notice that I was running and going fast in these places. Yeah, right. I didn't notice at first. I'm like, wait, that wasn't the vanilla game. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm right. right. Yeah, so yeah. there's that, and calendar has been reworked a little bit, so you have a little bit more free time. Uh, Morgana doesn't tell you to go to sleep anymore. Oh my god, this is probably one of the best changes in the game. It's just because there were so many days that Morgana would just tell you to go to bed, and you wouldn't be able to do anything. Not here anymore. You can do so many different things around the blonde. You can do crossword puzzles. 
available on certain days. You can read, you can stuff, play games, you can craft tools, you can it you can do anything and it really helps you increase the social stats. Which is another thing that I should bring up is that the social stats have certain counters that you have a certain counters. They have to have a certain number of points in each area in order to increase their levels. In Royal most if not all of them ha actually have higher values so it takes a little bit more to rank up these social stats and I, I believe it's to compensate for the more amount of free time that you have especially after going into the metaverse and one thing you can do that I didn't know about while playing is you can actually sit on the toilet inside LeBanc to see how far you are yeah and that's what that's a very very helpful feature that you can do and just it'll say like, all right, so maybe I want to focus on this social set today. Maybe I want to focus on this one another time. It really helps you gauge like where you are for each of these. Because like I think in my practice run, I have I think the only level three stat that I have at the moment. I'm at the end of August right now, and the only level three one I have is guts, and I already have charm maxed out. So all so all now it's going pretty good so far it's just i don't know i always end up falling on guts as my last one because there's not really much you can do to increase it it takes a lot yeah, i think the best way to do it is just do the big bang for the time. yeah just over and over and just grind it up and one thing that i really appreciate is there's an auto text scroll now oh yes the auto which yeah, the auto which, text scroll. <laughs> which made it easy for me because i already know most of the story so it's mm -hmm. like i don't i don't want to just sit there and stare at the screen while mashing the x button to skip i'm sure you can yeah, hit the skip button is. sure you can hit the skip fast forward but i don't know if there's something new that they might say yeah, so exactly. i just so i literally leave it on auto and then just go on my phone and do something else while listening yeah to right it. and just listen to it and if i hear if i hear something if i hear something new i just Put my phone down. I was like, up. oh, new, new. I think there was an auto text function, but you had to go into the settings. So you had to like configure it first, but you can, you'd have to, if you wanted to turn it off and on, you'd have to keep doing that. Whereas like you can just literally press square if you want to turn it on and off. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice addition. I yeah, I really people like probably. That a lot. It was really good, and confidants have been reworked. Some have different perks now. Oh yes, and at so the end of the yeah, and at the end of their like little session, they actually call you, and then from there oh, you can yes. get more additional points. Yes, the follow ups. Yeah, these these I felt were very welcome changes. Like just because you may be like uh, like a few points off from being able to progress uh, confident to the next rank, and then. They'll like have a follow up conversation with you on the phone, and if you get the right answer, you get that few extra points you need, and then boom, and then you can progress to the next rank right away. Yeah. yeah, I cannot tell you how many how many times those saved my ass. It's they're so helpful. Yeah. Also, I want to say a feature that I rather than John, I don't know if you're going to bring it up. What's the thieves den? Yes, I was. Oh, bring... the that... thieves den. Funny enough, that was going to be the exact next thing we were going to talk about. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Oh. I love I love the thieves den. Like, it's, it's really great. nice. It it's a nice uh, thing to have. Um, because one thing I didn't like was I couldn't really watch the movies or listen to the music. But here you can do it all. And even yeah, right. And characters actually will interact with other characters. Like the Kemi might you know talk to, let's say Yusuke. Mm. Yeah, like and, different confidants will have in different interactions, and it's really, really nice. And depending on what items you place, they'll talk about that item. Like, if you put in Arsene, you're, you know, you're, everyone will be like, oh, so this is Joker's persona. This is his form of rebellion. Mm. Yeah, it's a really nice touch. Which I'd still say Joker has the best Persona Awakening out, even not just in Persona 5, just of all the series. Yeah, he's got one Single of the best, best ones. Thing. It is very good, but there's a, you can also play cards in Thieves' End. Oh yeah, yeah, the that's tycoon. A, that kind of took me a while to understand the rules of it because it does get a little bit confusing. But yeah, it's pretty much just do higher numbers, do pairs if they don't have that pair of those high numbers. Mm, yeah. Of course, it's one that gets like the A's, the twos, the threes. And yeah, like, all oh, that shit. stuff. It's really all about luck. 
actually, yeah. Pretty like, much, yeah. Yeah. It's like, please let me have the right cards. And you gotta do three rounds, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But, of course, playing Tycoon and doing uh, some achievements, which I'll get to, gives you some coins, which you can use to purchase artwork and purchase music as well as other items that you can place from either Daily, daily Life, you know, the Velvet Room, you know, Mementos, yeah, and all that. Yeah, it's all really good stuff. Uh, Jose is also there to explain some yeah. stuff. He and he busts through a wall. He busts through a wall. <laughs> which, so remains un which remains unfixed. Unfortunately. Yeah. And you actually play as other characters too while you're in there. Yeah, mm. it's a really nice touch. So if you want to run around with Morgana, now you can. And I mean, let's reveal I think... let's reveal here. Everyone's probably running around as either Queen or Violet, but oh well. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that if you do step on like the character tile, it changes that outfit as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. You can literally run around the theme stand as like in like Joker in his Joker outfit, or anyone else's the Phantom Thief outfit. Yeah, right. And there is awesome. one. Yeah, and a new addition, Quanko, is trophies in the game itself, not part of the. Yeah, not know, yeah, not part of like the PlayStation stuff. Never has. I, don't, I think a Persona game been so easy to get a cheap, like a full platinum for. Oh my god! Because yeah. a lot of the hard stuff from like it took me three playthroughs of Base of an 05 to get platinum, mm. but this one only took me one. Yeah, right. A lot of the hard stuff has been sent to the achievements part of the Thieves' Den. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, but I do like how you can actually look at the artwork, see some videos too. That oh you can buy. yeah! Like mm. some of the concerts. I wish there was more. But I love. Oh yeah, watching I really all wish that. there was more to that. Yeah, let's. And of course, speaking of that, we did. Persona Five Royal does have new music, such as a new ambush Ooh. theme in a, in a as Takeover. And I yeah, don't takeover. know. I don't know if I love Takeover or Last Surprise more. Those, oh, it's so conflicting. Uh, it's it's such a hard like because, uh both songs slap so hard, but like, ah, uh, it's such a hard pick. Yeah, I, I don't know. Be... <laughs> we'll talk about uh, two tracks later on too, because those are good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we briefly talked about this place. But Kichijoji is a brand new location they can go to, and it would. I think it's the biggest part of the map. I yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest part. parts of the map. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is where you play billiards, which I think gets you like one point towards everyone. Depending on who you have. Yeah, it gives you it, it deep. It gives you like one point of bond between your entire party, and it also helps increase your technical rank. Proficiency. Yeah, proficiency. I've had in, I've had like knowledge go up there. I've had charm go up there. I think it increases like a random social stat every time you play. Yeah, and then they have the darts mini game, which boosts baton. And I gotta say yeah, that darts that darts game is pretty fun. It is really fun, especially when you like when you finally like learn the ins and outs of it like um one of the things that i did was i read the darts book which allowed me to use third eye while playing darts and then at the sports shop in the underground mall you could also get your own dart set which also like decreases the window like before the dot bounces around so like it got to the point where i was like scoring triple 20s like triple bowls every time i was like damn this is fun <laughs> Yeah, and another addition is the jazz bar, which... Oh, has... the jazz club. I hate myself because my first playthrough, I didn't really do anything with it because I didn't know what it was. Now that I do know what it is, oh, yeah. Yeah, it helps with level ups and stat boosts. Yeah. And of course, I believe, the... and I don't, I don't know if this is right or not. Non-alcoholic drinks are available there, which help boost some stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. And there is also a temple in which... Uh, Joker just kind of sits there and it helps raise his SP through meditation. <laughs> and one of the things I liked is the first time I went there was pretty much near the end of the game. And Morgan was like, oh, this scenery is nice. Hey, that's pretty nice. Hey, why are you ignoring me? Yeah, just, he's like, why are you ignoring me? And it's just like, it goes into Joker. He's like, Morgana's voice is getting farther and farther away. That reminds me, did I close my window before I left? <laughs> Like, God dang it, Joker! 
Oh my god, that I enjoyed that. But I think that's. Uh, are we missing anything before we get into like the big stuff? Um, the other big thing in Kijijoji is the secondhand clothes shop, which you are able to sell your unwanted suity armor. Yes. Oh, I put a lot of emphasis on this because washing that stuff is like it can get you some of like the best equipment in the game, like especially for like whatever point you're at. But for like the stuff that's like really outdated, like that you've had for a while that you don't want, you can go to Kijijoji, sell it for some really good cash, and they have a point system where if you build up enough points, you can get like different healing items you could get like an accessory and i think there's also a clothing grab bag which gets you two random pieces of equipment every time you go there yeah so all, so all in all it's a very uh, welcome location and it gives you a place that like yeah if you don't want this like grimy sooty armor you have a place that you can go and like sell it and get some extra cash hmm. it's really helpful when you have like a lot of the old palace stuff Oh, yeah, absolutely. And especially, like, when you're rolling around Mementos and you're, like, insta-killing everything and, like, they drop this, like, really old set of, like, sooty equipment. Like, I don't want this. Yeah, so that's also great because, again, I'm like, I'm not going to bother washing this. Why waste 5,000 yen calling Kawakami Exactly, to wash this? right? Right. All right, anything else before we get into I don't this? I think that was the last big thing. Did they did the... Uh, you actually have proper confidant with the catchy. Yes. Oh, that's re yes. The just yeah, the justice confidant got completely really reworked, so it is no longer through story progression. You actually have to go and do outings with the catchy. And to be honest, I really enjoyed those outings. Like it was really fun. Just like instead of like you know learning about a catchy like just through story progression, you actually get to go out and hear his story while you're spending time with him. It was, it was a really nice change. I just love, I said this to you earlier, but I love that like the end of his um, rank eight, which is like where it stopped, he literally, he literally goes to go, I hate you. And literally yeah. throws his glove. You can hear the malice in his voice. He's like, yeah, I yeah hate he's like, you. I'm going to be honest. I hate you. That's a, I, what I love about that is you actually had to fight him one on one. Exactly. It would, well, and then, then of course, you realize you could just cheese, cheese it because if you bring Shikiyoji, Akechi literally can't do shit to you. Except for the almighty attack, and when you just go, oh, yeah, take a quick drink from Takemi's shop. I'm back to Yeah, I'll just take a quick thing from Takemi. Like, All right, we're back. Here we go. I think it's like every third turn he uses the almighty. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah Akechi yeah. did get a rehaul, and it, he does stop at rank 8 before Shido's palace. And yeah, the, and then you do do the final two ranks while right like right before and then after his boss fight in Shido's palace. And to get his yeah. uh, we're delve into this a little bit more. To get his third tier persona, you do have to like hit certain options. Like you have to be like, you are yeah. my rival. You know, we you know we gotta fight again. Hmm. Exactly. And, and you finish the last two ranks in Shido's palace where he dies in the vanilla game. Mm -hmm. And I do like the little interactions. It's like you see you catching on the other side of the wall, and Joker's just like, "I still have your glove, so don't go dying. Yeah, right. yeah, don't go dying on me." Yeah. So I love what they did with the catchy, and when he finally shows like his true side afterwards, I just love him even yeah. more. Yeah, it makes him such a good character. I'll tell you what though, when he like appears on Christmas Eve, when so I told you to turn yourself in, I literally went, I literally yelled his name. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, like, no, I did the same. Th you know I did the same shit. I did the same shit. It was the last thing I expected. It was like exactly. you, yes. It's like you came to save me, <laughs> buddy. I love you, Akechi. <laughs> Maybe you're not a jackass. Yeah, but I love when he goes full like. Uh, yeah, I don't give a shit anymore. And especially when he's your guide for a while in the, you know, spoilers, new palace. Uh, yeah. I love that when yeah, he's well, the navigator. Oh my god, his his nav lines are fucking hilarious. He's like, ah, oh, you got him. Oh yeah, kill him. I was, <laughs> well, wondering, then, I was wondering if he was getting off to Joker hitting the weak spot. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, well, no. The one of my favorite ones it was just like where he's just like that one got that one got turned on by his friends. Must suck. And I'm like, dude, really? Fuck you. 
<laughs> Pot calling the kettle black. Here. You're right. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Uh, but yeah, and one thing Persona 5 Royal does offer is a new third semester. But of course, uh, one thing that they also did was two, you know, aside from Jose, we do have Maruki and Kasumi, and I want to talk about Kasumi next. Uh, I really like Kasumi. If Makoto didn't exist in this game, she would be definitely number one waifu. And I know you two traitors love her more. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm I sorry. Help I'm sorry. I had to know. My jokes, curiosity hey, was big too jokes, much. Uh, jokes on you. She's 15. Enjoy jails. Ah, shit! <laughs> <laughs> But oh, no, I I really did like Kasumi's. She and Joker have such good chemistry. Mm. Like the fact that she relies on him so much for inspiration, and just really she like she finds her drive to keep going forward. Like through the, like everything leading up to the third semester, is like her confidant is it's only five ranks, and then when you finally get to that rank five, instead of like the the voice saying thou has turned a vow into a blood oath it's thou has gained a glimpse of the faith's truth and i'm just like oh there's gonna be fucking more please yeah, that, that fucking twist in oh the my god i was like holy fuck see my problem was i did intentionally spoil myself when it came out in japan but even now it somehow still surprised me like everything in that third yeah, semester still surprised me. It's just hmm. that good of a twist. It's like holy fuck. I think I kind of had like when in the third semester where we have like the sort of I guess shadow thing of Kasumi like waving to like her sister in the crowd, and like Kasumi's got a different hair color and everything. It's like wait, is the Kasumi we with not actually Kasumi or like? And then, like, we get told it's not, and it's like, what? It's like, how the hell did this happen? Mm. And the cause behind, like, everything that transpires in the third semester. Oh my god. You talk about something that just literally impaled my heart and then just ripped it out vigorously. It was finding out who that who that new palace ruler is. Oh yeah. my god, and, it hurt. And you actually get it introduced to this like palace early. Yeah, mm. I think it's shortly after you take down Okumura and then he has the mental shutdown. Cause, yeah. cause, because the context is Kasumi at the time, well, Kasumi was, um, Shujin was talking about revoking her honor status and like no longer supporting her because, well, she wasn't achieving the results that the school wanted. So she stormed off and was all depressed and everything. So and you remember, it's like, oh, she really, she liked to go to this new, like the stadium that was being built when she was depressed. So you get there and then an anime cutscene plays out like, wait, what the fuck happened? And then you see the nav icon on her phone and we're like, what the fuck? But yeah, then you get introduced to this new palace and it's just you and Morgana. And then Kasumi undergoes her awakening and this leads into one of the well not very tiny it's one of the nitpicks that i have is that yeah. you go through kasumi's awakening and you don't actually get to control her in the metaverse until the third semester yeah that that's one complaint i have she's just like at the very end they get to use her yeah it just it doesn't feel right they, because she undergoes everything and she's like oh i gotta focus on gymnastics right now and everything <laughs> just like i'm just like girl if on makoto and haru can make this work you can make this work don't give me that and then she even offers to join you to help take down shido but what does joker do nope gotta protect my precious little bean it's morgana no, actually no Morgana's more about oh, like, oh, yeah, it was more Morgana. I'm like, I, I literally wanted to turn to Morgana like in game and say, "Dude, we need all the fucking help we can get at." Yeah, Mister. Yeah, uh, like, have Haru fight when her persona is not fully awakened. Oh my god! It's, <sighs> it. Uh, but speaking no, of that, I was, I was not. The but speaking of awakening, someone 
or a lot of people mentioned that during Kasumi's Awakening, there was no blood when she tears off her mask. Yes, that was another thing. It really hinted at, it really kind of hinted at that twist. And can yeah. I say, I really like her persona, Sendrion. Even though oh, it like... Sendrion, it's so, it's so fitting of her. Yeah, because you know Cinderella led that was leading that double life, well, kind of unintentionally, but she she went as a different person and everything, and it really just fits with her character so well. And it ties back with you know the main the main villain of Royal, because that person's <sighs> that person's her fairy godmother, making her yep. wishes come true. But her integration into the story, I felt like was surprisingly well done. Like. If I hadn't played Persona, it was very well done. If I hadn't played Persona Five and I just played Royal, I'd be like, "Yeah, this seems fine. Nothing really felt out of place." And yeah, I, I mean, I do love when she came when she was in Hawaii and she kind of tried to surprise you. Oh, it's just that hello, senpai. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I had to look it's myself. Like... I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, "Remain faithful to Makoto. <laughs> Stay strong. Stay strong." Yeah, she fit oh. really well into the story, surprisingly. But again, going back... Yeah, she it was, integrated very well. Again, I felt like at the... Earth, I, guess, I actually could have sworn that event actually took place during Futaba's thing. Because I could have sworn that's when it took place. Um, mm, it was either shortly before... O it was either before Okuma's or after his palace. No, I could have sworn it was during either that or Futaba's. Because I remember I was just messing around because I always wait 10 days till the deadline to actually infiltrate the palace and I was just walking around and it's like oh gotta cut in here's this thing yeah so I don't know because like there's two times where you find her at the at the stadium which is once is during summer break where you go with um Ryuji and Yusuke and that's where you get Ryuji and Yusuke showtime and then she kind of tells you like oh this is where I come when I need to give myself a pep talk and then the second time was where she stormed off after finding out the school was probably gonna, you know, not support her anymore. But yeah, other than that, like, I, I felt, I was, I'm on the same boat as you, Midnight, like, I really felt Kasumi's integration into the story was done really well, like, you could really, like, like, every scene she was in, she, they could feel like, yeah, she really appreciated Joker for what he was doing for her, and like, their chem, like I said before, their chemistry is really good, like you could tell, they had a they have a really strong bond from the start. It's it was done really well. Yeah, can I just say though, when Kazumi was first announced, it was probably the first time for majority of people. But when I first saw, her, I thought she was gonna it was gonna be similar to the I think it's P three P three S like the Persona three port and the PSP. Well, I thought she'd be like the, like a female protagonist, like the like female the protagonist. Like, that yeah. immediately went away when I heard she's a first tier. I'm like, okay, yeah, then, then it's not gonna do that. Yeah, like mm. now I get it. My worry, my on. worry, was that she was gonna be a Marie. From oh from my god, I was kind of in the same boat as you, dude. I'm like, please don't let this be like this. Yeah, but it's kind of it's more of a Fez than a Golden. Yeah, mm. and you do get a tiny little event with her at the start of the new year. Oh my god, that's really adorable. Because like she she messaged you saying, "Hey, you want to go to the shrine together?" And like she co she shows up in the uh, kimono and everything. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. But can we agree that she has like the best blushing face out of every oh, single she's, person? In the oh, she's so cute. Her rank nine, or where I, well, where where I where you get to decide whether you want to romance her or not. It's so cute, especially like so funny. well because. Well, it was was well, when I said yes. Well, when he said yes and everything, she like started freaking out, and then you get all in her face, everything, and she just oh, like I her face that. just lights up. It's so cute. Cause you, cause Joker slams his hands on the table and leans in. Yeah, he basically yeah. just like, let me look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and she's just like, ah, <laughs> so cute. I gotta mention this. I was a scumbag, and I did the hair out in this game. <laughs> Oh, you did! <laughs> <laughs> I oh had to say, if I wasn't, it would be extremely hard for me to say no to Kasumi. Because 
Usually with it's all so romance. So difficult. With all the because she literally. With oh all the romance God. options in Persona Five, they don't specifically tell you that. Hey, I'm in love with you. They were like, oh, do you like me? And but this one, she's just blurts out, "Yeah, I love you. You like, accept me or not." It's like, how can I deny you now? It's impossible. God, I don't want to feel like an. Well, to be fair, I would say. Like, friend zoning her is probably difficult, but the other one that I always hate friend zoning is Haru because you can oh, yeah. tell that she liked Joker a lot. And when she when he, you tell her no, she's like she gets so sad and like I'm sorry. It was it's the same feeling with like Haru that I got like when you reject her. Is I know you probably won't agree with me at midnight, but when you like friend zone. Um, Yukiko in Persona 4 Golden, she literally runs back to the inn. Like, says, Oh, I've got something to do, and then she runs back to the inn. It's like, No, Yukiko, come back. It's like, Please, I'm sorry. I know. But it's kind of good. I'm going to derail here for a bit, but I did like the new additions for Valentine's Day. And they're oh. actually, and oh. there is a benefit for you not cheating and staying loyal. And that is friendship chocolates from all the other females. Oh, yeah. it is really nice. It's really nice, like getting every, like all the like special gifts from everyone. And then not to mention, like, like I haven't experienced this myself, but I like because there's also the Christmas Eve events like that are a bit different. Like I, didn't, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I looked up Makoto specifically because I wanted to know what I was missing out on, and it's cute. I've, I've seen all, I, I watched all of them on YouTube. I'm like, oh, come on. It's I was like, like I, I wanted... missed out on this. God dang it. Yeah, I wanted to, I want to do them, but it's like, shit, if I do that, I'm literally going to have to like break Kasumi's heart. It's like, no. And I don't want to fucking do okay. that. <laughs> because I did a harem thing, that means I had confidence at that time. I guess that's one more problem with Kasumi is that you can't spend Christmas with her. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing I, w I really wish you could have done was just spend Christmas Eve with her because especially after the whole twist in the main game where you trick a catchy and Shido and then like everyone just st slowly starts finding out by like the year alive. The fact that Morgana and Futaba went out of their way to like get in touch with Kasumi and say, hey, he's alive, by the way. Why don't you come to LeBlanc and see for yourself? I'm just like, you guys are the best. And one new addition to Valentine's I like is the Bros Night. Oh, the Bros Night! I've <laughs> seen that. It's so good. Because it's it, originally it was just Ryuji and Joker, but now Yusuke and Boss join in too. Yeah, it's so nice. And certainly the Bros. It's like you're the Bros Night, you're, baby. You're alone on Valentine's? No, I'm with my boys. I'm with my boys. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the other thing was like, yeah, the Valentine's Day event. But what I really, really liked was that they added a white day event. Yes. Oh, that yes. was, yeah, that was, um, that was awesome. I was really surprised that, the fact that they didn't that, like, that originally. Yeah. And like, I really love how it like led up to it. It like stops on that day and then boss comes up. He's like, Hey, you, you got any plans for today? And like, what for? For a white day, of course. You do know about white day, right? What? Oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> And then he goes through this detailed plan and shares it with you. And like, there's like, boss, I fucking love you right now. Oh, that was also had one of my favorite comedy moments. Not because they said anything. It's like, I was like, yeah, and that's when you give it to her. And then one of your options is the bill. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> just like the bill. I just imagine boss like, no, you idiot. No, he's just like. No, that's not what you give her. You give her the flowers. You sure as damn hell don't give her the bill. <laughs> uh, I, what I like is because I just imagine Joker being serious. He's like, the bill. <laughs> just imagine a full fucking Yudaru Kami moment. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I just imagine him going, the bill, and then Boss just comes up the and bill. smacks him on the back of the head. <laughs> just fucking <laughs> idiot. Boy. Okay, railing again from the railing. I actually forgot oh, yeah, to talk about I forgot to talk about uh Caroline and Justine and how you oh. can actually hang out with them. 
Yes, as they got they got some because one of the things that I heard a lot of people like talk about was like outside their confidant, you really don't get to do much in the way of like spending time with them. Not anymore, as you can as starting in June, you can take the twins to various locations through the city and just kind of show them around the city. And it's so cute. Like just you take them to these different locations and like you teach them about like like these different facilities and everything. Like the, f- the first one you take them to is to take them to Big Bang Burger and you do like the ultimate challenge and everything there. And then you can also take them to the church. You can take them to the gym, the movie theater. Uh, you can do the beach, the maid cafe. I think like one of them, like one of the last ones you can do is LeBlanc. Hey boss. I know, I've only ever. Yeah, it's like oh, uh, it's like. And get to spend time with them. I get to show them around the city. This is so nice. You hang out with the children. <laughs> and then, of and course, yeah, they, <laughs> they are small, but they are very, they are very small. And you do get one final one with Lavenza at the very end, oh, which yeah, I, which I enjoyed because nice. more Lavenza is always nice. But going, well, yeah, and like because everyone, because I'm, I'm in the boat with everyone else. I was saying Lavenza really needed some more screen time in the in like in the original. And oh my god, she got blessed with such good screen time with the third semester. I mean, where she where she comes to where she literally comes to Shujin and explains to everyone what's going on is like it's like yay more of screen time. Uh, <laughs> but from the derailing, let's get back on track to Kasumi. Uh, you actually can hang out with her during the school festival. And what I liked about the oh. school festival was I actually didn't have any of the you know party members maxed out for romance not even on but when i got the options it was either kasumi or haru no i think it was haru i only had for like the final part yeah well i think kasumi is like an automatic one that you do like you'll do it regardless because there's that little animated cutscene there's that yeah. anime cutscene that you plays out but you could spend time with like for me i could do either makoto or haru because i think i had makoto maxed out at that point I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Yeah. Of course, I always love Joker's dancing. Oh my god, god it was so because like <laughs> eventually I just want to like when I get when I just get to that point again, I just want to record that clip and just make a montage of Joker dancing to different songs. Because <laughs> like, damn, he busts a move. He's like, Kasumi's like getting into it, and then Joker starts, and she stops and just looks at him like, whoa. I mean, have you played? Have you played like the dancing games for something like that? I've well, seen. Yeah, it. I haven't played it myself, but I, I, I've I play seen the enough. Games. I've seen enough to know, like, yeah, Joker does go in. Yeah, uh, Kasumi is a confidant of the faith, and as you said, she goes up to rank five. But the two you do get, like, two benefits are tumbling at rank two, which actually allows you to. There's a chance to be avoid being surrounded by enemies and palaces. So if they like. I think try to s- swipe you. You kind of like yeah, dodge it's, out of the yeah. Way. It's like yeah, it's like if you if like they spot you and then they charge at you, um, you have a chance of like just back flipping out of the way and you can turn it into a normal con- encounter or in most cases an ambush. Yeah, mm-hmm. number four is the hook, in which you use the grappling hook to get grab them from the distance. And I think I don't know who's confident. I think it might still be Ryuji's, but I don't know who's. But you can like run past a shadow in palace and just swipe their mask oh yeah that's ryuji's that's one of ryuji's new benefits is the stealth dash where it's harder to detect uh when you're you're dashing that's really freaking good and if you run past them you just swipe the mask yeah it's really good but one thing i hate is because it blacks out for the red it looks like joker's dabbing yeah (laughs) oh that's awesome i didn't realize that all right, we'll come back to Kasumi because I want to get into the next character, Maruki, who's oh, also new. Oh, Dr. Ferdinand von Maruki, as we call him in the Let's Play. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he is voiced by the one and only Billy Katz, and he is amazing. He did such a phenomenal job, especially at the very end. Oh, oh you can yeah. feel everything. Yeah, but he gets introduced right after Kamoshida's incident. He is the counselor, and his confidant is the counselor, or consoler, or mm-hmm. whatever. And he basically is 
It make, he fits in because it makes sense after this whole thing, you know, people getting sexually abused or physically abused. Yeah. You would kind of need a counselor there. And that's his job. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, he, he is optional. And he can, unlike Asumi, you actually can max him out. You can max him out right away. Well, as fast as you can. I think it forces you to stop at one point. Yeah, I think it's after rank five, he is unavailable until like when school picks back up in September and then you do four more ranks and then his rank 10 is on his last day at the school. He'll call you in and you'll eat lunch with him and he'll like thank you for everything and that's when you get the rank 10. What I like about that is you guys eat like shrimp, like like tempura and it fogs both your glasses up. Yeah. Well, and like one of Joker's responses is like so tough being a yeah, I think well, one of Joker's responses that is like the life of a four eyes. Actually, that 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 made me think. Another thing we missed. Uh, in group messages, they will send photos of like certain events. Yeah, yeah different yeah. events like the fireworks festival or your day at the beach or the summer festival. It that's a rather really nice quality of life change. That's the really only, nice. the only re reason I remember it is because during the hot pot, it, one of the pictures is Joker's glasses fogged up. Yeah. Yeah, but. The two pictures I remember are the one where Joker drops his shaved eyes. Oh, poor guy. That's really good. And then the other one is the, um, the New Year's Eve one, or the New Year's Day one, where, oh. on, where you basically got all the Phantom Thieves guns in their kimonos. Yeah, that's, that's another really good one. But I really like Marky's benefits, because you get Detox. And I rank oh, two, so when Joker cool. is afflicted with an ailment, he may recover immediately. Yeah, and, and then it, he's also got Flow, which gives which has a chance of giving the effect of charge and concentrate when a battle starts. And if you have this audio call me, that's OP. Oh, it's so good. We'll get to and him. then as he progresses Confidant, those event those uh, de uh, detox and flow will have a better chance of uh, triggering. And then one of his other benefits is when Joker's SP is low, it, he has a chance of recovering more, and I think his max rank benefit is Joker will recover more SP when he's low, and then that uh, that ability triggers. Yes, that is the final one. Yeah. But I really like Mark. He's a really... Like, I want to be friends with him. I wish he was my counselor. He gives you... Marky he, is he gives you such candy. a good character. He gives you candy. Like, you can tell... Yeah, you can tell that he really cares for the people that he talks to. Like... He talks to all the Phantom Thieves, like Minus Futaba and Morgana, and like you can feel just the he does interact of their with conversations. He does interact with Futaba and Morgana at one point actually, because he visits LeBlanc. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. He visits them in LeBlanc. And about his character, he's actually looking into cognitive science as well. With, same with Futaba's mother. Yeah, so he has yeah, so he's kind of reason to kind of look into it, and he also strikes up a really nice conversation with Futaba too. Yeah. And the more you progress in his confidant, you do learn more about his past, like with his girlfriend, and how I believe it was like, was it a robbery? And what you yeah, killed, like both. It was a robbery at her parents' house that they were visiting. Both of her both of her parents were were killed, and she like suffered like a. A traumatic breakdown to the point where like she didn't like respond properly like she was just broken on the inside and you could really tell like damn this this is tough yeah you also meet his what, friend yeah. uh shibu sawa like, as well. like mm -hmm. when you go through like the palace you can you actually get to see like three videos of like basically traumatic events from the past yes yeah it's the events yeah and it, it, yeah, all of Maruki's, all of Maruki's, like, past details and, like, everything that he's done. Like, it, it, it gave me the feeling in my gut that I didn't want to be right about. But when I found out that I was right about it, it was just all the more crushing. Yeah, so I guess we'll get into the third semester now. So, in the third semester, first off, you do do the scene with Kasumi. And what you do go to the shrine together. It, one of your first hints that something's bent off is when you meet her father. In which he tries to tell her something, but there's obviously some kind of distortion when he says her name. Yeah, so something is going on. And then obviously there's also the fact that 
Oh, I don't know. Morgana is suddenly a. I gotta admit, he's way too good looking. And plus, he's voiced by Bryce Pappenbrook. It doesn't help. Yeah, so basically, but... you basically you you see that. Well, actually, you don't see it first because you go downstairs like any other day, and that's when you see Human Morgana. But you don't know who it, who the hell he is. But the first thing that does yeah. set Joker off is seeing Futaba's mother, Wakaba. Well, yeah. it, it's not even seeing her directly. It's Futaba walks in in her kimono and she says, and one of the customers says, "Oh, you look lovely." It's just like, "Yeah, thanks. My mom and I picked out." Like, wait, what? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Say that again. And like, cause and then you start f figuring out slowly, like, wait, Wakaba's alive. Haru's dad's alive, and more importantly, Akechi's alive. And he's free from and, prison. Yeah. Yeah, and Akechi even comes to you, and because and ori originally it's just Joker and Akechi that realizes, yeah, something's off here. Like these people were dead, and now they're alive. And you're sent, and you know that something is wrong too. Yeah. Also, like you don't see him, but Makoto's dad's also alive. Oh yeah, that's right too. They also, when you talk to her and Sai at one point, yeah, they do. That it is revealed that their dad is alive now too. I feel like that was a missed opportunity. They could have easily had a model and her dad right there. Like, oh, yeah, I'm that would have been father. really nice. But yeah, like other than that, and it's like, and then Kasumi calls you out of the blue, and she's like, "Hey, um, remember that palace we kind of accidentally slipped into all those months ago? Well, I kind of fucking see it." Yeah. And I was like, so then that leads into the exploration. The we finally get to learn more about this palace that we found out about all the way back in fall, and then delving more into it, and it's like, and so it's just Joker, Akechi, and then Kasumi. So they go in and they explore a little bit, and then there's that twist with like, like with maybe Kasumi isn't who we think she is, and then that leads into one of the most devastating twists in any Persona game. I well, not in any Persona game, in any game that I think I've played in a long time. Is that the third palace's ruler is none other than Dr. Maruki. I will say this. Uh, I immediately knew Maruki was going to do something. I didn't even know any... Sp While I did look at spoilers, I didn't specifically know Maruki was the evil bad guy. But even with like the first reveal trailer and all that, I'm like, mm, something's up with this guy. Reminds me too much of Adachi. He's, yeah, smiling. He's smiling too much. <laughs> well, and it's... Yeah, it's funny because, like, well, when we, when we first met him in the last... Let's play. Like some of the guys were like, I don't trust this guy. And then he saved our asses in a mid boss battle with his uh, with detox, and now everyone fucking loves. Him. It's gonna crush him when we get to that point. But yeah, Maruki starts going on and on about it's like, hey, it's like, yeah, you guys call this a palace, so yeah, I guess I'm the ruler. And then like everything's like with Kasumi and everything happens, and then he shows you a video from her past. And it comes to fruition that Kasumi isn't Kasumi. Rather, she is the younger sister, Sumire. The real Kasumi died saving her from an oncoming car. Which is which is actually hinted at in the beginning of the game. When when you go with Sojiro to visit Shujin, he actually says there was an incident a few days ago where a young girl was killed in an accident man her parents have got to be devastated and then it, it hit me all at that point i'm like oh my god they've been building up for this since the very beginning of the game just got a tense whiplash it was just so like seeing that cutscene and then like her phantom or like her spirit of rebellion just fade and then the ribbon just fall out of her hair and then it falls down it's like oh my god it was a great reveal, and they even it was such a reveal. good reveal. And I gotta say, I was surprised to see all that blood on, like, on the street when they yeah. when they pan out. I was oh, I wasn't yeah. expecting them to actually show the body. Well, no, yeah, I wasn't expecting it either. I thought it was just gonna like be the blood just kind of coming in, like, but no, they actually showed the body. I'm like, oh my god! And then you you see the body, and then it shows the blood. I'm like, oh my god! They're actually do I know it's a rated M game, but it's like. But this Whoa, is a whole crap. other level. But yeah, and then... 
But then the fact that, like, she doesn't even want to go back, she's like, she doesn't want to go back to being Sumire because she doesn't want to feel responsible because, well, she thinks she's... It's almost like Futaba in a case where she blames herself for her sister's death. But this time, it's a lot more easier to see. And, like, yeah. why she would feel that way. It just it just hurts. And then Maruki ends up, like, taking her and, like, keeping her in the palace. So you and Akechi are forced out of the palace. It's like, shoot, we really got to figure out how to go about this better. So then it leads into figuring out, like, where your teammates are and, like, what's going on with, like, their new lives in this. Because the premise is that Maruki has the power to alter reality itself. So each of the so each of the team is living in their their ideal life, like the best possible life in this reality, free of suffering, free of hardships, just the best possible outcome. And, and it, the ne- it's over the course of the next week that you figure out like this is what each team member, this is what everyone wants in their ideal world. And it's not an illusion either, because those dead people are actually back to life. They aren't some yeah, kind of it's illusion. Not an, yeah, it's, it's not an illusion. But it is reality. It's a reality he's creating. Yeah, reality itself has been warped. And of course, this all transpires because of the defeat of Yaldabaoth. Because all this yeah, stuff yeah. happens immediately after Yaldabaoth is defeated. Yep, and you can even see it because because the first change of this new altered reality is Akechi being alive. Mm. He turns himself in. So that's kind of the first hint. That's the first hint that you may not realize right away. But but eventually after the point, like everyone, if you're talking to everyone, well, if we have to do this alone, then we're going to do this alone. So Joker and Akechi go back in, and and eventually it, it turns into a one-on-one between Joker and Sumire because Sumire just doesn't want to go back to her old life. She just doesn't want anything to do with it. So she actually ends up fighting Joker. Then the next thing you know... Maruki pulls a hentai and then just unleashes her her persona like going berserk and everything. Yes. Uh, but yeah. Actually, before we get back to that, I gotta say, when you have to go talk to everyone again, that was actually extremely annoying. Because you actually have no that access. Because was... you waste like seven days and you actually don't have access. Yeah, it's like a you, you don't have access to your quick travel. You actually have to walk. To each yeah, you actually have to walk them. all the way there and do all this stuff again. It's like, really? That, Why? That, that was annoying and waste of seven days. But yes. Yeah, I mean. Yes. Her why pers- can we just not go and visit everyone in one day? Come on. Yeah. Or let me fast what travel at least. Like, yeah, right. Do that? I, I like we joke at him being like extremely vague as to why he's like asking on these really weird questions. He's like, oh yeah, you'll know. You you'll know. Of, like, You'll meet me somewhere. It's like you'll understand, and I just always choose the "you'll understand" option. Yeah. No, I chose. I'll be waiting. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'll be waiting. Oh okay. yeah, and then leads into that boss fight with with Sandrion, and then those morphed, and then those like um, other other shadows, and like because Joker and Akechi, like they know they're outmatched. Like, they can't mm-hmm. do anything, so as they prepare to finishing off, I really love Skull just charging in and taking that blow for them, and that signifying, THE CREW IS HERE! Although, there was one thing about that that I- there was one thing about them coming back that I really just didn't care for. Of all the people you had to stick me with, why did it have to be Ryuji and Morgana? They're the worst possible combination to have for that fight. Oh, I switched them out immediately. Well, Ryuji's nice Joker. because of the attack buff. Yeah, Ryuji's nice for the attack buff. But the but the two shadows that are always on Sandra on sides, they're immune to win. So Morgana's, like, useless. I'm sorry, Mona. Like, I'm sorry, Morgana. I love you, but you're just you're just the worst possible person to have for this fight. Yeah, but so, yeah, it was a really, it was a really, really like nerve wracking boss fight. Just like I really, we really got to pull her out of this. And especially because uh, Sandrilia uh, or Sendrion takes the HP of one of her two goonies, so yeah, I kill them. First. Yeah, and heals six hundred HP each time. And of course, once they're gone, then you just attack her. Yeah, you just you just go at her as much as you can. 
But yeah, that boss fight was actually really, really intense. I, that was probably one of my more favorite moments. Then you actually like get Sumire back, and then you, it's like when you're because everyone starts kind of realizing like, holy shit, is that Maruki? What the hell is he doing? And then you find fully explain it to everyone. It's like, yeah, we really have to fucking do this. Well, the thing is, like, you can kind of understand where Maruki's coming from as well as to why he's doing it. Exactly. This, and I feel it's that very reason why it makes him such a good villain and more or less just a moral great character. Because he, like, he believes what he's doing and he's also acting in the bet he believes he's acting in the best action for everyone he wants people to le live lives with no pain no suffering no discourse he wants people to live their best lives possible and he feels the only way to accomplish this is by altering reality itself and of course the problem with that is people can't grow if everything is given to them exactly there's no growth. People aren't. People are just going to be expected everything to be handed to them. There's going to be like no individuality. People get stronger from the pain that comes with life. That's how they grow. And by Maruki taking that away, he's basically hindering their everyone's growth. And it ties back to something we'll get later, but it does tie back to the final area before you send the calling card. It does tie back to what we were just talking about right now of control and all that. Because mm -hmm. essentially his goal now is to become the new Yaldabaoth. He's going to be the new god of control. Exactly. And I'll explain Yaldabaoth a little bit later on what his goal was. And what his connections were. But yes, you do that. You actually free Kasumi. Well, now Sumeri. Who finally accepts that she can't be Kasumi. She has to be Sumeri. And she finally accepts that, and Marky pretty much lets her go. And he's like, yeah. if you guys want to do this, we'll do this. Here's when I'll exact my plan. You have until then to decide whether you're going to fight me or join me. But yeah, it's really... And then, like, just kind of going through the going through the motions for a while, and then deciding, like, yeah, we're going to go back in, we're going to do this. And the next time you re-enter the palace, Sumire is out in front waiting for you. She's like, yeah, I want to join you guys in doing this. She ties her hair back up and then clothes change and everything. So you're like, okay, I guess we're going to add you to the team. And then that's, that's when she finally gets her Phantom Thief code name. And honestly, it's the perfect one. Her Phantom Thief code name ends up being Violet, which is, which is uh, Sumire in English. Because so, Sumire means Violet in Japanese. So it's really fitting of her, and it re I really like it. It's pretty. It's really nice and everything. And then once you delve a little bit more into the palace, that's when she has her true awakening. She's like, "Yes, this is. I'm done running from my past. The weak-willed Sumire is gone. I'm going to live as the strong-willed one that led forward." So Sandrian fully awakens. And then after that fight, that's when the final five ranks of the Faith Confidant become unlocked. Yes. And then from there, you can play the game like before, like any prep time before. You get one whole month, which I'm a little disappointed by. That it's only yeah. A I month. really wish there was more time. I really wish there was more time to do stuff. It's a tad disappointing, but then again, it is really it is very easy to complete because Maruki's palace is divided up into how I see it: three days. You do the first chunk of the palace in one day, then you're comp confronted with an obstacle that that basically says, oh, Mementos is back. So you have to go into Mementos and there is a 14 area, like new section of the Mementos that you have to trek through. And that's day two. Day three, it, it could be considered the rest of the palace leading up to the route to the treasure. Yes. Mm. I but yeah. Wasted, I... Um, I think I wasted quite a few days like before going into Mementos again because I wanted to get the Personas that's right i did the same thing yes because depending on yeah yeah depending on how many of the phantom thieves you have maxed out before fighting yelled about you can you can kind of go see them again and say and they'll kind of apologize for being like hey i'm sorry i was trapped in that reality when i should have be should have been helping you and everything and that's when they awaken to their third tier personas and i gotta say all of them are hella broken they are very powerful. 
And I like all not of only, them. Yeah. Because not only do their traits change, they also get unique skills. Like, Anz is a party-wide concentrate. Ryuji's is a, is a party-wide charge. Uh, Makoto's is uh, debilitate on all the enemies. So it's an increase to attack, defense, and then accuracy invasion. Uh, let's see. Who else was there? Haru erects a shield to all allies. And... Actually, I think Haru's is a party-wide heat. Unless that's use, unless Yusuke's is the party-wide heat no, riser. It's... Uh, Yusuke's is... Yeah, it's pretty much Heat Riser for all of them. Okay, that's what I thought. Then Haru's is the shield for all the allies. Yeah, of course, except Almighty. Yeah. And then Which Goro's is, yeah, and... is colossal damage to one foe. And then yeah, Sumeria's it's, it's, is severe yeah, it's damage Almighty, to... Yeah, colossal Almighty to one foe, and then it increases damage if the opponent is downed. Yes. So that's really freaking good. <laughs> Yes, after you infiltrate the palace for the first time, meaning Sumeria's Awakening happenings, you can go visit each one of your maxed out party members and get the ultimate persona. And I'm going to be teasing this for a little bit for a later segment because I don't know why or what possessed him to do this, but to lock Joker's ultimate persona behind DLC. Because Raul looks so fucking cool. Why is he DLC? I've seen, I've seen game. It's so dumb. It's like, why is this DLC, guys? Come on, total missed opportunity. Again, we'll get more into well, DLC I mean, a little later, but my yeah, guess, my so guess dumb. is that it has something to do with the fact that you actually can fuse Setanile in the third semester, but it's one of the hardest fusions to do because it requires. Fires three ultimate fusions for different arcana, and they're all advanced fusions to boot. Hmm. I feel but, like it could have been yeah. some story thing because Sat Satanile physical and Satanile gameplay are very different. Exactly. Because obviously the Persona I mean, version I've, I've of Satanile. Yeah. Persona version yeah, of Satanile isn't. Satanile he's skills. not giant oh, compared to the story version. Yeah, exactly. But yes, exactly. Uh, Morgana's ultra persona is Diego. Ryuji's is William. And is Celestine, or Celestial, I don't know how to pronounce it. Yusuke is. I think is it's Celestine. Celestine, alright. Yusuke is yeah. Rokichi. Makoto is Agnes. Futawa is, at, is Al Azif. Haru's is Lucy. Goro's is Heraward. And then Sumeria yeah, is. It, I think Sumeria's is Ella. Ella. I gotta say, uh, yeah, and all of, I like yeah, the way. All of them look so good. While I do like Ella, I hate that she's facing backwards. But I get it because yeah. I think I think it's supposed to be like a bride throwing the bouquet. Yeah, almost or like the masquerade s because that's what's that's what the unique unique third tier skill is for Sumeria's masquerade, which is colossal physical one foe two time. Yes, please. Yeah, but I'm glad that they brought back the third tier personas. My oh, only, dis yeah, my so only disappointment is during the third tier's awakenings, it's not fully voice acted. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, that's a little yeah. Kind of wish it was. I'm like, oh, come on, this is a really big moment. They're all apologizing. Yeah, really They're all getting emotional for. It. And that's one thing I understand is why they accepted the new reality so easily because they just be yelled about. It's like, we did this, we freed everyone, Cheeto's gonna go to jail. What? I get my mom back? Whoa, what a bonus. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's hard not to pass by such great stuff. Because if you do something great and then you also get like a little bit extra, you're gonna be like, you're not gonna question it. It's like, oh, I, yeah. I, won, exactly. the, I won the marathon, now I get a hot tub? Whoa. Yeah. I think yeah. if you go back to what we were talking about with Raul, I think if, like, obviously, being DLC it's annoying but what they could have done is if you got um the tier three personas with all the members of the phantom thieves then that's how you get raul that would have been good that would have been really nice it was kind of like one last bonus yeah you know i don't know what reminded me but i didn't forget one part of the accessories that you get from jose fixing them you actually get an additional skill once equipped to someone else. Yeah, the skill does change. The skill changes to reflect um, the kind of like what the boss is like for Kamoshida's. It's Champion Cup, so you heal HP, and then you also get an attack. Madarame's is like uh, Brush Vanity or Vanity Brush or something like that. 
but it absorb. I think it like nullifies weakness normally, but then it also like has another added effect that I don't remember off the top of my head. Kanashiro's is probably one of the best because it's a party wide defense buff and it absorbs an attack besides Almighty. Yeah. And then I don't remember what the other ones were off the top what, of my head. But what I like about it is you don't have to get rid of a skill to put it on. You just get an additional exactly. seventh skill. You just so get an additional skill. Yeah, and it's just it's just there, and you could change it wherever you want. You want, say, Ryuji to have a healing skill. There we go. Now he heals. Yep, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, but I, yeah do like, uh, I do agree. If I think mm -hmm. getting Raul should have been, he had to get everyone else's persona, ultimate persona. Then maybe Levens was like, yeah. hey, you know that that, or you just kind of have a scene by yourself while you're in the bed, and it's like, yeah, I did this with everyone. Then your personas yeah. fuse. Yeah, that and would have I, been really nice. And I think, to, let's just say you have all your personas already filled. Maybe he just kind of gets sent to the compendium, and if you have free time, sacrifice your persona to get rid of a space. Yeah, you can get him back. Maybe, like, get him back for free, like you do with the DLC. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I really want to I wanna double check something, really, while we're talk talking about this, because. If, because I remember saying like the fusion requirements for state denial were like really tough, but like his skill list is really good. Like it's top tier. Like let's see, starts with Ryagon, gets the heavy to all foe, severe almighty to all foe, surviving instant death attack, and like and then there's one magic damage plus fifty percent, and then severe almighty to one foe, heat riser, and then it, it's so good. But in order to fuse them, it's ridiculous because, oh wait, I was mistaken, you need four ultimate fusions. So you need Arsan, Anzu, Ishtar, Satan, Lucifer, and Michael. It's a very tough requirement to fill, but one of these days, I'm going to try and do it. I want to try and do it because it sounds too good to pass up. You're going to need a lot of money. But yeah, yeah right? <laughs> And he was really good yeah. in the original Persona 5 and managed to do it, but... Yeah, but from then on, yeah. after you get everyone's old Personas, you can go about the whole month like you would usually do, because this time you actually don't have to send the calling card in advance, because it will force you on, I think, February 3rd? It's uh, February 2nd. February 2nd, where, you, where you're forced to send the calling card. Yeah, during this month, you can finish Kasumi's Confidant, because the last five and lock and you could just finish any other confidants maybe you didn't get to finish like if you didn't finish ey's or let's say oya's you can go and finish those yeah it gives you extra time it gives you extra time to fully like finish confidants that you maybe didn't get a chance to finish in the, the original in while you were doing the other stuff which is really nice i really like that added time where you get to do something then the other thing that I really found use for during this free time was I was finally able to go in and like play darts with everyone, get their baton pass levels up fully and get like the technical damage increased fully. Maybe go visit the jazz club a few times when I didn't when I didn't in the original. Go to the temple a few times, show that off. But yeah, it's ultimately up to you what you want to do with these like 20 some days that you have before the ultimate before like the final final battle. Yes, but I, I but, but, yeah, before we, yeah, before, yeah, before we touch on that, on the final, final battle, I think we need to talk about the final area of Maruki's palace because good God. Well, actually, let's talk about the palace as a whole because it, it's kind of oh, like the a, palace as a whole. Absolutely. Because the starting area kind of looks like an institution almost. In which, you yeah, kind of like a university get, of some kind. Yeah, patients get checked in and, uh, Tell them the problems, and it's like, okay, you know, answer these questions, go up to the next room. And I like the little segment where you have to think like Mark. It's like, what would Mark he choose in this situation? Yeah, what what would he do? I got one out of three. I got the last one right. That yeah. Wait, well, you got the last one right? Yeah, I got the last one right. I didn't get the others right. Dang. I got the first two right, but not the last one. I got the middle one right. Yeah, I got the last one because he's like, oh, this happened because of this. I'm like, oh, yeah, easy. He would do it to yeah. change people's hearts. Yeah, right. But, and then I think the next phase is like, go to like some kind of flower garden. 
Yeah, no, it's basically implied it's like the Garden of Eden is what is what that last area is because like there's so many flower gardens and like there's people ascending into like their best lives so like heaven more or less i like and speaking of that it just gave me like vibes of persona for heaven and i was like what the fuck yes and but like talking about and then yeah the other thing that i would really like to bring up in regards to maruki's palace is the palace theme itself Uh, gentle madman is such a good track for a palace the piano is haunting but it's also soothing just everything else like the subtle hints of choir here and there it's just it's so mesmerizing i love it so much and it also really sets home when you start tracking down the will seeds because when you start taking the will seeds, like it kind of reflects on the like w- the theme of each palace. Like cost, uh, Madarames was vanity, size was jealousy. For Maruki's, it's sorrow, mm. and that just really hits home. It was like everything. He's like, oh man. Yeah. Uh, before I actually talk about the Garden of Eden, uh, we got to talk. We briefly touched it earlier, but there's I think three tapes. That you get to watch yes yeah. there are three tapes that kind of detail events that led up to like maruki choosing the course of action that he did the first other than that just like watching and then like the sky turning red it's like oh this is the point where mementos fused with reality and everything it's like oh my god everything's coming to fruition and everything had to fall just perfectly because it's because like everything that he stated and everything, it's like you put the pieces together and you find out that Maruki also has the power of persona. And it was because mm-hmm. of mementos fusing with real fusing with the like Shibuya that Maruki was actually able to fully awaken to his persona. And that that mm-hmm. it, it's like almost like, oh my god, everything worked out just absolutely perfectly for him. Mm-hmm. There's no other way. It it was great and it did make a lot of sense. Of why he wasn't able to contact him earlier, because obviously yeah. he never he never went uh, into Mementos or a palace, so he never really got to form that contract until that moment. Exactly. Yeah. And it is a little scary knowing that even though he didn't fully awaken to a persona, it was able to still at least change reality just a little bit with Sumeri. Yeah, that's yeah, we, right. Because one of the other tapes, yeah, yeah, because one of the other tapes was well, I think there was actually four tapes. Now that I think about it. Because yeah. I think it was the third one where it fully shows, like, he had a session with Sumire. Because Kasumi, because while she was Kasumi, she mentions, like, oh, I knew I was going to him before he came to Shujin. And then you see that session, and, like, he altered her cognition to the point where she believed that she was Kasumi and that Sumire was the one that had died. And it's like, mm. oh my god. It all makes sense now. And. Even though people will call her Sumire, in her mind and to, I guess, everyone else around her, it is... Yeah, uh, it's, it's, she hears Kasumi. That's all she hears. Yeah, and it's able. It's powerful enough in which it can even you alter, like, an ID. Because when Joker finds it, it does yeah. say Kasumi. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's so powerful. Again, that's he even awakened his persona yet. His persona's just like, here's a little bit of power. Yeah, exactly. It's so amazing just like the the sheer amount of power that he has and had and that he has at his disposal it's like he didn't even like i said didn't even fully awaken and he was able to alter the cognition of two different people and that's terrifying it is extremely terrifying and i actually want to talk about what his persona is it is azathoth and i'm reading this from the wiki azathoth is an outer god in lovecraft's cthulhu mythos it is almost said to be too horrible to even be described. It is the ancestor of almost all the other deities or beings in this mythology, including Cthulhu, Nyarlathotep, and Yogg-Sothoth, and others. And it is known as the Nuclear Chaos, the Daemon Sultan, and the Blind Idiot God. Just and now hearing that, it just drives home the point. Like, holy shit! And it's weird because the amount of power. It's known as the nuclear chaos because in SMT, it's chaos versus law. That's the yeah. whole thing. And even though it's the chaos, it technically it falls into law the way Maruki is using it. Yeah, Because exactly. I want to go back to talking about 
why his final area looked like Eden. Because I read up that Yaldabaoth originally was the god who controlled Eden. He's the one who created mankind. And it's because of, you know, the devil giving Adam and Eve the fruit that allowed him to break free from Yaldabaoth's control. Because Yaldabaoth essentially made him and it's like, okay, you get everything you want, but you have to listen to me. Don't listen to anything else. But of course, following yeah. that, that prevented their growth. It wasn't until they ate the apple that they finally got to grow. Even though they were kicked out, they were at least able to grow. And this is kind of the same that's happening with Maruki. He's trying to become the new god of control. He's like, don't think, just accept. There's no need exactly. to do anything. You don't need to grow. Just listen to me. I'll take care of everything. Everything will be done for you. And where does that leave... That does not leave the option for growth. And that's what SMT exactly. kind of, that's what SMT is all about. Sure, chaos, you know, it's freedom, but of course, you know, what they do with that freedom is up to them. Well, with law, mm -hmm. everything's done for you, everything's peaceful, but there's no chance for you to grow as an individual or for society to grow farther than it needs to be. Exactly. Which is why I loved it. And even the great tree from which there's apples clearly growing out of it. Yeah, it's just like, oh my, it's like a, it's, the symbolism is just amazingly, hauntingly beautiful. And because Joker's persona, Satanao, is supposed to re represent Satan, aka the devil, and him kind of, because of the way the staircases are, it looks like he's slithering up the tree. This like yeah, the way the snake, right? just like the way the snake was when he offered the apple to eat. Right. Mm. But of course, before all that, before you climb, you have to send the calling card, and they know that he's mm -hmm. just not going to accept it any no like extreme way. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait for him to contact you, and on the day before he contacts you, he's like, "Hey, I'm right outside LeBlanc. And You go. He's like, "Can we talk?" And you go down and you talk with them and he's trying one more last opportunity to make a deal with you it's like everyone's happy here we don't have to fight just you know accept my bargain and you know you can have the life you've always wanted all your friends can be happy and of course he calls out goro because he knows goro is there yeah, and, exactly. and then and then he basically tells joker the only reason goro is here is because of you if you defeat me and get rid of this reality, he goes too. Yeah, and that's really, mm. really just drives home. And well, Akechi just, he doesn't care. He just, he doesn't want to be tied down by anything. So he just like, he better not be going soft on me. We need to end this now. And I, it's, oh, it's so good the way Joker gives him the call card. Because Mark is already standing up, ready to leave. And he just tosses the card to him. And Mark is like, yeah, he's like, thanks. And he's like, ah, I guess I needed this. And then, right there and then, is when his level goes all the way up. There's clearly no malice. Yeah. yeah, there's no malice when he gets it. He's just like, so we're doing this. All right. Yeah, he's like, so mm. this is the path you've chosen. And then, of course, you have your little one on one with Goro. You know, which you've gotten everything right. He evolves to his third tier persona. Yeah, he gets his third. He gets his third tier awakening. Yep, and then you consult your team one last time and say, we we got, this is it. This is what we, this is, we need to defy him. We need to defy this one last time. We need to show him that we need to stand on our own two feet, start the infiltration, and you are greeted with a song that rivals life will change like no other. Seriously, I believe is so effing good it is a fantastic track with lyrics that match life will change in its themes i believe will matches pretty much everything i think it's mostly from like the protagonist point of view compared e to that final song exactly mm -hmm. exactly it's so it's so it's so fitting for like the lead up to the final interaction it's it's so good i mean hell and it's just like the opening lyrics it's time to unveil the hype you've been waiting for it's like oh yup we're doing this we're fucking doing this <laughs> yeah and then from yeah. there you climb up to with mm -hmm. from the tree where you greet maruki and that's when you all of you have your 
again, he's trying one more time to convince you. But you decide that your will is already set, and you will fight. And his fight is... I wouldn't say it's as difficult as Yalabao. Because at this point in the story, I was at level 99 with everyone. Because yeah, even, yeah. even when I thought yelled about, I was like 75. Yeah, mm. I was around that level too. It was but, just like... I, I, the fight I don't, the fight itself, I don't think it was meant to be overly difficult. I think it was just um, of the overall message and just the sheer power of this, like everything going on in that fight. I mean... Even, like, when he summons his persona to the battlefield, like, the way he, like, hauntingly says, I believe you called forth your power, like, the persona. Oh, Just that like, was oh. chilling. And mm. It sent chills down my spine. I'm like, oh, my God. And then what? what's even better is throughout the course of that fight, he appeals to each of the party members that you have out at the moment like saying just like hey you shouldn't give up on this dream like i can make it come true and then the party members firing back with i'm gonna find my own dream i'm, I'm doing this on my own you see the party members i had at the time were you know sumere uh makoto and haru and just hearing him plead each one of them was like makoto you can you can have your dad back everything you can be have a great relationship with your sister and he's just like yeah forget it Haru's, he's just like, you can have your dad back, you can run this company together, you can have your cafe. And of course, she's already accepted what happened with her father. And then he goes to Sumeri, which I, oh, that was a strong one. He's like, you had everything, you, that can, was go, so strong. you can go back to being Sumeri. You don't have to live with this pain anymore. But of course, she, show her, she shows her growth. Yeah. I think Akechi's was one of my favorites because I ended up using him for that fight. But he's like, Akechi, if you're with him and his friends, you can begin to atone for what you've done. And Akechi's response, uh, still one of my favorite ones. I'm getting real tired of all this high and mighty pretentious bullshit. <laughs> it's like, I expect nothing less out of you, Akechi. Nothing less. Please never change. It's a great fight. And it's, again, it's not too tough. And one thing I hated that I did during my first playthrough, or my first version of the fight, because I stayed right before the fight and I did it a second time. One of my greatest things I hated doing, that I regret doing, was using Izanagi no Okami for that fight. That made it way too easy, because he does summon tentacles to help protect them. Because you can't actually attack, Mar you can't attack Marfi, but his persona heals him. You have to attack the persona. And using Myriad yeah, Truths completely wipes on. away all the tentacles. One thing I did notice with Myriad Truths is it actually didn't do really a lot of damage to the persona. No. It, really, it, it really didn't no. do too much. But other attacks, yeah, like, it's just, it... but like a full-blown nuke from you know Makoto and a one-shot kill from Har really did a lot of damage. Yeah, I think it's like after you get rid of all the tentacles, then yeah, that's when no, like, you, that's when you can start doing the real damage to it. Yeah, it, it's a great fight. I really love it. Yeah. And I, it was a really Of course when fun. I did it when I did it without Izanagi Okami it became a little bit more difficult, but not too much. Yeah. Okay. My, not, my main persona for that fight My main personas for that fight were Vishnu and Koryu. Both of those guys carried hard. Hmm. I was going to say that it's not a difficult fight. It's just a very impactful fight. Yeah, it's it's just more about the overall message and just the general impact it has. Like, yeah, this guy that was... He has he has good intentions at heart, but it's just he's going about it the wrong way. It's like it's come to, like, trading blows. It's just like, ugh! And of course, that leads into, I guess you can say, the second phase of this fight after you yeah, beat him. Yeah, the second phase. After you beat him, you do get his treasure. And it's, I think, wow, what's it called? I know there's a proper it's a name. It's a torch. It is? It's, I don't know if there's, but it is a torch. I don't know if there's a proper name for I it. Think, but I think there is a proper name for it. Yeah, it's a torch, and you basically take the, cre the treasure, and of course, the whole place is falling apart. And. You want to take them with you, but you really can't, so you leave. Of course, everything you drive Morgana down, 
the whole tree as it's falling apart, and then you kind of bust back into the city, which is still fused with mementos. And from there, you think it's all over, you got the treasure, Margie comes right back and just swipes it right back. His treasure. Yep. Which I thought was the, one of the most badass things. He's like, you thought you got the treasure? Nope. And swipes it right back. He's like, I'm not yep. done. My will yep, isn't going to be... Done. My will's not going to be broken this easily. I've done too much to just let this end right now. And then what does he do? His persona undergoes a second awakening, becomes to the scale of what I would say maybe a bit smaller than what Set Satanial was against the Elder, and its name has now become Adam Cadmon. So now it becomes so now it becomes a fight with just Mar just you're attacking Maruki and his persona, and you and you have one of the single best battle themes playing in the background throw away your mask if you, you listen to the lyrics of that song and it just oh yes. if you want to understand marky listen to that song that is his theme that is his song it's so it's, it's powerful. all from his point of view and if you play the game pay attention you know this is him i want to briefly yeah, you'll again, know it's him I, I want to read again from the wiki about adam cadmon the original man in the teachings of kabbalah untainted by earthly matter he stands in contrast to the Adam of Eden, who was made from the earthy clay. He was the perfect prototype man made by God. With the Kabbalists taking the, this concept to describe the divine symbolism of the human body, in later teachings, Adam Kadmon came about to personify the Messiah, with Adam, oh, it's a hard name, being his contrast as the devil. He is symbolized by the Seraphon, which are the ten circles of creation in the Kabbalah. So basically, he's almost the perfect being. He's the perfect prototype. He's almost the perfect being, perfect prototype. He is the one that will listen without question and won't be swayed. But yep. But once you take down Maruki and then his persona starts staggering a bit, he gives one last effort to, to stop you here and there and fuses himself with Adam Tadmon, offering his full strength. They become one being. Goes into the goes into the third and final phase. No matter what you do to this to the, to Adam Cadmon, your attacks have minimal effect. I'm talking one to three damage. Maybe more if you're if you have if you set up but he will he'll do a turn of charging and then he'll do a full powered blow. But what? it's what? like looking like nothing you can do. One thing I was disappointed to learn is that pretty much this whole fight is scripted. Like even it if, is. even it if you really don't heal, is. even if you don't heal, you'll be stuck on one HP. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't know, so I just kept pulling healing. Yeah, same here. I just kept guarding and healing whenever I had the chance. Okay. But yeah. eventually, it's just like, what can we do? And then Oracle comes up with whenever he does the whenever he does that big charge up. His head's defense level drops to zero. And then that leads into probably one of the most climactic moments I've ever seen in a video game. You get the rest of the Phantom Thieves holding back his fist with their raw power, with just their power of their personas. Each of them gives like this really inspirational line. Akechi's is my favorite because he literally just tells Joker to do his damn job. <laughs> and then you get Joker running up the debris, uses his grappling hook to swing up, lands directly on Adam Cadmon's face, and what does he do? Pulls out his gun. Checkmate. Pop! It's one of the most badass things I've ever seen. One thing I am disappointed with that fight was he didn't use Satanile. Because I would have loved it yeah, if, like, Satanile and Adam Cadmon, like, threw hands. Like, they kind of, like, just maybe do, lock each other in battle. Get out like that. That uh, would have been so good. You know what would have been cool? Mm. Of course, this goes into a later part of the fight, because there is one more part of that fight. First of all, before that actually gets there, the whole place is crumbling, and Morgana, you know, there's debris falling. Morgana tells everyone to get into his van form to protect them. And of course, everything's falling, and he has no, they have no way of escaping. Morgana can't fly, and I think it's Sumeria says, you know, can't you fly? 
They says, yeah, hey. Sumire was the one that says, says Mo Mo Mona Senpai, can't you fly? And of and course, he, but then he's just like, but I can't, but there's no time for that. I have to fly. And wouldn't you know it, the star that Jose gave, gave you grants you one last wish, and Morgana turns into a fucking helicopter. See, I want to bring this up. I think that wishing star is like the complete opposite of how Maruki deals with things. Because that wishing star, you, exactly. have, you have to have the will. You have to have the imagination. Like with the, all, like with the Showtime attacks, they all thought about it. They all knew what they were going to do, and they had the will and resolve to do it. It wasn't granted to them for free. They had to work for it. And I feel like that's the same thing with the wishing star. It's in complete exactly. contrast to Maruki. Maruki gave it to you for free. Well, this one you had to grow and believe mm -hmm. in yourself to achieve the power. Yep. But Morgana turns into a helicopter, which still works with the you know whole heist theme. Because sure, you get you know the escape vehicle. But it's also you know for like the biggest heist, you need the escape helicopter. Yeah, so, and of course, of course, everyone's crammed in there, and a catch piece at the bottom of the cockpit being smushed. But where's Joker? He's just dangling by his grappling hook, soaring through the air like the badass he is. But of course, as they're flying. Wouldn't you know it, Mr. Hentai Man's tentacle grabs the <laughs> chopper and basically keeps it in place. And saying that there's no way that they're going to leave with Marky not letting him, Joker decides to cut himself loose, or actually just let go, yeah. and fight Marky for one final bout. And yeah, like, but yeah, even Marky's just like, sorry to cut your flight short, but there's some things that I need to get off my chest. So and then it goes into this final fight. The power of the metaverse is fading. Neither of you can summon your personas anymore. So what do you do? You, you all you do is just throw punches one after the other at each other. Well, Maruki just shouts everything. He's like, I gave it all up. And one thing he tells you at the very start of the fight, he's like, I still have some regrets. If you can take them out, then do it. Yeah, it's get rid like, of any of can, my lasting regrets. Yeah, it's and like as you're like throwing those punches, you can feel the weight behind every single one of that. Yeah, because yeah, you can't it's use just so powerful. Yeah, there's no knife to use. You can't use your gun. You can't use a persona. You can't even use an item. It's just your fist. And I think, and I'm a sucker for when anime characters or like video game characters have all these powers. You know, they can and then maybe... they resort to nothing but their fifth. Yeah, I hate to use Naruto as an example, but when Naruto and Sasuke fought and they chakra was pretty much all out, it was just a pure fist fight. Yeah. No emotions can get any stronger than people who are just fighting with all they got through their fists. They got nothing else yeah. except their raw fist to show how strong they are and what how strong mm -hmm. their will is. Yep. And it's it's so powerful so powerful and of course eventually you know Marky loses that fight and as the whole place starts to crumble he almost falls to his death but Joker at the last second grabs his arm and saves yeah. him and he's yeah, like he's him. like why'd you save me you know I'm, I did all this why, why save me and it's a strong moment to show the bond that Maruki and the Joker has. It, it's really strong. It shows that all that time that they spent together wasn't for nothing. A bond was formed. You know, isn't you know good versus evil. It's just a guy trying to set the other on the right path. It's showing that this isn't the way to go about things. And that there is redemption. No one's going to hate you for trying to do the right thing. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's what made this fight maybe one of the best, you know, the best in the series. Yeah. Not because of its difficulty, not because of the strategy you have to use. It's just the emotions that you feel throughout the fight. The weight behind it. It's not like... Because here's the thing. If they lose, nothing bad happens. They just get what exactly. they need. It's there's no 
bad ending in this version of Royal. There is no bad ending. It's... Yeah, right? That's why I love this thing. Well, I can't say it's... This experience is worth the $60. I, I will... If I could forget one thing, it would be this moment so I can relive it again. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. For the first time. So powerful. And then... You get out of the palace, and Joker isn't there. And then you realize, Marku's reality basically just came apart. Like, it doesn't exist anymore. So Akechi was never there to bail him out. So Joker's now stuck in prison. And then Sumire picks up picks up that little piece of paper that came out with them. And then you, upon closer inspection, it's an article detailing like giving the details about what happened to Maruki's girlfriend when she was attacked and then it hits you that was the source of his disordered desires and they're like oh fuck <laughs> one thing I even though it was an emotional scene one thing I did find funny is when they were asking you know where's Morgan where's Morgan and then the soldier's like oh the cat's outside and they get mad because it's like yeah well I, I'm really they, tired well, yeah, I'm, I'm really tired of this cliche where they yeah, Futaba's like, recycled gag Yeah, Futaba's like, recycled gags are the worst! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Marky's plans never came to fruition, everything pretty much went the exact same as it did in the vanilla Persona 5. Like, at the end, you still have your confidants trying to bail you out. Of course, this time with the help of Sumeri, who convinces her coach to use some contacts she has to help. Yeah, use some connections. Yeah, it's really nice to see, like, all the cons out at the time. Like, just go through, like, resource they have to help Joker. Like, I was able to see, like, Jahaya's. I saw Oya's. I think I even saw Oy's. Oy's was really nice. Yeah, so it goes on like normal. And, of course, that's when the new stuff with Valentine's and White Day happen. Of course, if you're a cheater like me, you get your ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to bring this up, but the fact yeah. that Sojiro has connections is really funny. Like to the point where she, or the point where he could get you like a prime seating for like a white day date. Oh, coffee dad coming in clutch. Yeah, he's just like, mm. oh, you know, Mr. Sakura. Oh, oh, my bad. We do have an opening. One second. One second. <laughs> it's so good. And one thing I didn't notice because. Even though I pledged my loyalty to Makoto, I did do Valentine's and White Day with Kasumi just because I wanted to see the new stuff. Uh, apparently, yeah. if you choose a different girl than you did on Valentine's Day, they actually try to call you during the date. Like, if I yeah, if I Valentine's Makoto and then I went with, like, Haru to White Day, Makoto starts to call the phone. And, of course, the date's like, oh, who's calling? Aren't you going to answer that? And yeah, it's if, like, it's not important. And if you did go with another girl, at the very start of the day, it's like, is this to make up for Valentine's Day? Yeah, right. Which I thought was very nice. Uh, but, that was a really nice touch. And then at the final cutscene, it is different than what the base game was. Yeah, I guess, it's actually really different. Of course, this time you go back around, say goodbye to all your confidants like regular. I was surprised first time you couldn't actually go see... Sumire, I was really disappointed in that, but of course they showed it later on. And yeah. seeing Shojiro cry again, like wipe his tears away, yeah, that, oh, was that really hit. Nice. That hit. I knew that was coming, but it hit all over again. It, yes. Uh, it's so, so nice. Yes, the cutscene this time is different, because in the original, uh, you are still being followed by the cops. However, Morgana steals apart from that to go fix the van. And then you guys drive off, but before they take you home, you guys go out for like one last hoorah together yeah exactly well, on this game of course you're still being followed but this time the whole gang kind of leads the cops away while you go to the train station to go on your train however the one that picks you up and offers you a ride is maruki in a taxi it's really nice he's like hey he's like hey you guys need a lift and then of course he takes you to the to the train station while the others distract you know the police and from there he has like a yeah no joker tries to give him payment he's like no you don't have to pay you know but you did was enough and he's like you know 
people can change, as you know, he sees with himself. Yeah. And then from there, he drives away, and then you go on your train. And if you did everything with Gore right, the final cutscene shows Gore. Yeah. And, and then, then the that me- last, the true ending, you see him, you see his uniform. You're like, oh shit. And of course, you, Joker looks in the glass. And he, you know, his reflection, he does see that he's still wearing the Phantom Thief mask. You know, symbolically, then he takes off his glasses, and the mask also comes off, showing that you know his journey has ended. Yeah, I will say though, like while um, Persona Five Royal's like true ending is great, I will it say is. that I actually prefer Persona Four Golden's true ending. Yeah, I've heard that one is really good. It is. If um, have you seen it, midnight? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've seen a little bit of it, and it's, uh, it's pretty freaking good. It is really good. I think uh, I think it would have been cool like, if you had like gone back, like to say like in a year's time, just to see where everyone is. That would have been really cool. But... Oh, speaking of which, that is something different. Uh, pretty much the whole gang moves away. Almost all of them. They restart oh, yeah, their own careers. Yeah, almost all of them, they go off on different endeavors. Makoto and, Makoto and Haru, they look for places to live on their own because they're going to college. Ryuji's moving closer to a physical rehab facility so they can work on getting his leg fixed. An is going to study overseas, and Futaba starts high school. He's really the only one they call him. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing I actually want to see in some kind of weird spinoff. The event because I guess the only ones still there are Yusuke, Futaba, and Samira. And I would love to see some kind of spin off with just those three. Because well, together is hilarious. Oh, yeah, but I just like throw some. Sum- I think Samira would be like the straight man. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like imagine Yusuke, Samira, and Futaba have to solve like a big issue. It's like, oh, we need we need the best. It's like, all we have is Utava, Yusuke, and Sumeri. Mm-hmm. Of course, Futaba would be the leader, I think. Or Sumeri. Damn, now I kind of want that. <laughs> but yes, it does show further growth on all the character sparks. They don't just stay. They all have now new goals they want to pursue. They're not going to have it be given to them anymore like they did with Marfi. They're going to earn it on their own. And uh, I guess this will be the final segment. Segment. Segment is DLC <laughs> and how Atlas continues to suck ass when it comes to DLC. Yeah. For, for starters, the one that boggles my mind is Sumeri's $15 DLC costumes that you only use for a month, maybe four Ex- times in total. That's why I said there should have been another month. We've talked about this separately before, but I feel like there should have been two months. One dedicated to going further into mementos to clear out that blockage. And then, of course, the second month, we focused on Marky and his stuff. Because mementos was just like, yeah, go there, go up up 15 floors, do that. Uh, You don't have to come back here except for like a few more missions. Right. Which I felt like was a waste really kind of was i mean and i think and there's also the other fact that i've seen like footage of akechi and the sumire in earlier levels so i'm pretty sure if, like you do new game plus you can get like you can get them early and i think that's kind of like where the value for that is but seriously it should have just been available from the start or kasumi mm. be available like shido's palace a lot earlier yeah so either give another month or have her start early but the fact that she gets no nothing free no free costumes or anything yeah nothing it's all you have to pay for them and again back you know with raul you know he was dlc you had to pay for him and of course some of the dlc is yeah. outright broken like we talked about this but izanagi no akami Picaro is probably the best persona in that game easily <laughs> 
Because you yeah. give up if you do a right setup with him, make sure all of his attacks are like 50% damage, doesn't cost as much SP, concentrate. Myriad Truce can beat anything. It made the yeah. it made that final part with like the first part with Marky super easy. It made the Reaper fight take literally two turns. One to power Oof. up and then just Myriad Truce and bam, he's gone. Oof. Izanagi no Okami Picro is the definition of pay to win. Yeah. Right. Like you picked him up for the um, for the Akuma fight and just didn't get rid of him because I was like, I just need him. Yeah. <laughs> just like you in tough situations and then that's it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you people know. said this to death, but yes, the DLC price bundled together. It's the same exact right. price as the game. Yup. No, that's just horrible. And then some of the challenge battles, I'm pretty sure like 90% of them are locked behind the DLC. And it's like, clearly they, ad no, they advertise this as something new. I was like, yeah, it's new. Behind DLC. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the fight against the P3 and P4 protagonists. Those were awesome. Because you can't just, while you can just Again, Mariette's truth them to death. You don't get as many points from doing that. It's the goal is not about mm. while you do have to beat them. The goal is racking up these points by doing specific things. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it a challenge battle. You want to get the highest points. It's not a matter of can I beat this guy in so and so turns. It's can I do this mm -hmm. in that amount of turns that's needed for the point boost, as well as meeting all these other point requirements. Yep. Hmm. I guess Pretty just much. I guess just a quick question. Do you guys think this was worth sixty dollars? Honestly, yeah. I feel like it was well worth sixty dollars. A lot like the change a lot of the quality of life changes, dungeon changes, the combat changes, the fact we're getting we got new content. I I would dare say yeah, it, it well warranted a well warranted full price. Yeah. I'll I agree with her. It's well worth because the 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 stuff that kind of the nitpicks that you could have with the base with the original game were kind of like adjusted in Royal, which makes it a much smoother game. Obviously, there are still nitpicks that we because we blind them out, but with the game, but the major ones that you had with the original game are taken out and just improved. And they also added new stuff into the fights so for, for the boss fights and dungeons, so it's not like the same game. You're not paying like sixty dollars for like the same game. See, I'm a little bit on the fence. Like, I like the new stuff. I'm like, I just again, most of the good chunk of the game is still the same, but just some quality of life changes. Right. So that's why I'm a little bit fifty-fifty on it. Mm -hmm. But I still enjoy it. If yeah. you haven't played Persona Five. Uh, as cheap as the base game is, go get Royal. It's definitely the definitive edition. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Definitely. I know Scramble's out in Japan. I don't know if they address Royal. I've There's heard... rumors about it getting a Western release, which I really hope it does because it looks so much fun. The rumors I've heard were that it is after Royal, kind of the way like Ultimax was with Golden. Yeah, yeah. Because Golden came out around the same time as. Uh, base arena so of course they couldn't mention it but in Ultimax they're like oh yeah Marie's here too yeah so I feel like that might be the case because yeah, I really hope it is. I'm pretty sure they can easily explain why like Sumeri isn't there it's like oh she's at uh, a practice at some kind of meet yeah, maybe she's back at, in she's Hawaii like some kind of meet. Yeah, and again it ended almost the exact same way as base vanilla 5 so they can yeah, get away exactly. with that they don't have to mention mm -hmm. Maruki. There's no need to. I'm sure, they can maybe offhandedly say it, but there's really no need to. And I really yeah. do hope that it does come to the West because I want to see more of Sophia. Yeah, I, she looks adorable. I also want to see more of Zenichi too. Yeah. At this point, if you include Goro, and this is excluding you know, Strikers right now, they are tied. The Persona Five cast is tied with the Persona Three cast for the most party members, if you include Shinji alive. 
Dang, you right. <laughs> like, they have the ex almost exact number. So yeah, that was our discussion about Persona 5 Royal. Uh, where can they find you guys? So, um, obviously, you guys can... Obviously, um, I'm on Twitter at Ferelony392. Or you can also check out my YouTube channel at that same link. I'm also, I'm also all over the place on Discord. Maybe you can find me on a server there. But yeah, most likely you're going to find me on YouTube or Twitter. Thanks for me. You'll find me on Twitter at uh, XLSmarks. And you'll find me on YouTube with uh, just XLSmarks as well. Hope out. <laughs> I have other stuff in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully we can hopefully talk about Strikers when it comes out. Or Scramble, actually. Oh, mm. heck yeah. So, probably talk about that. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.